I just want to get a photo on my phone. I'll ask this nice lady to take it for us. Nice. And she gave me a weird look. Mm. And I was like, that's Carrie Ann Kennelly. <laughs> <laughs> no, Give me my clothes. Technical difficulty. <laughs> Fuck. God damn it. <laughs> Come on. I don't look at you and go, was to fight with my some aunt. ugly piece of shit. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> to fight. That sucks prolapsed butt. Come on, you cowards. Open your minds. And your butts. <laughs> this cow. This oh, my cow. God. This side of the room. Oh! 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 No! Oh! 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 Okay, coming at you live from the Low Key Studios. Oh my goodness! Starring Stephanie Ben Dixon. Ooh, so Stephanie Ben Dixon. It's, so it's not my. It's, it's not my fault. You put the camera too low. <laughs> Peter Burns. <laughs> it's Little Will. Gus Ronald! Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> I'm your host, Nick Richardson! Oh, tonight on the show, we're dead by daylight on the battlefield after being sideswiped and arising early with our halos as we glimpse a new horizon on which we will inscript our fates. Mm. God, it's a busy show. It's a good description, too. I'm impressed. Yeah, get off that close up. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everybody. <laughs> How are you feeling? Why is it so high? Why is there so much? Well, headroom? there's a bit of headroom. I don't think you it's how you... to do your job, Peter Burns, but uh, I feel like it could be adjusted. You can lower the camera by seventy degrees. Oh, not that. Ca- there it is. There's the business. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. That looks good. Fuck, I'm pale. You're just he's tall and stuff as well. Why am I so pale? Yeah, it's the not same. That much. No, no, no. Because even in his close up, he was sitting low in it. Multi-fish ass for table cam. That's not until I've built one. That's all my butt. Oh, yeah. Are you still doing that? <laughs> oh, no. Crystal low. Christmas no. Melbourne project. You and your dad. You and your, oh. you your mum. Yeah. You and your sister. You uh, and I've your left niece. my router in Melbourne. So, yeah, there's my excuse. I'm sticking with it. See, anyone who has a router... You've got the small couch to use, couch boy. Anyone who has a router shouldn't complain when someone says... I need me you to use it? Because you're like, I have a use for it all of a sudden. Oh, yeah. you mean a... Router. A tool router. router. Yeah. Not a internet router. Correct. Is it actually pronounced a router? I think it's a, no, it's what? a router. It is a router. Yeah. It's a router. Why do we name things same things? Though in 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 essence it is the same as a route that you take on, on a road. <laughs> it's the fucking And I call that a route. <laughs> you do twats sitting on the couch. It's like forced <laughs> relaxation. <laughs> forced relaxation. <laughs> oh, God, like, so, so comfortable. So comfortable. <laughs> oh, uh, good. Um, <laughs> welcome, everybody, to back. I'm so pale. i got to get outside more. Do you want some bronzer? I can put some on you. Uh, can you? Yeah. yeah like, post yeah. show. Post show. Wait, question. Oh, no, I don't show? want to be sitting You're through pale. two hours of you being just pale as shit. That's, that's got can I ask a genuine... Put, the TV has... Okay, cool. let me look at me on Twitch. Oh Proper question about bronzer. Is it the stuff bronzer. that you put on and that, like, slowly over I time think I makes you Pete, bronze? give me the close-up. Oh, my fucking... God. No, that's, that's, that's fake tan. Oh, okay. Bronzer is bronzer just... instant, Steph? Oh, yeah, I look much better on this monitor, don't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This but, is just, it's, a cool, it's a cool set. Okay, no, I look fucking great at this, but but still bronze me up, Steph, because, like, you can always you can always go bronzer. up. I don't care. No, he loves that. Get in with the glitter. The, Get in with yeah. the glitter. Pete looks more pale than Nick's is like a blob. And it, because I fucking am. Yeah, that's right. Should we start a pre-show? Because <laughs> we opened we with the it. camera adjustment and makeup. Lovely, lovely. Just subtle. Can you, uh, Steph, no. as, someone who, as someone who's from experience, has always been in the makeup chair for longer than I have. <laughs> you're still in that position. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you want to blend. Face you want to blend. <laughs> yeah, Steph, what's, like, some of your you best, your what's some of your best makeup chair small talk? Um, or if you were, if you're the makeup artist like you are now, can you give us some of your best? Uh... <clears throat> so this bride that I had to do. Oh yeah. On Thursday, oh, crazy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Her mother. Oh yeah. Let me tell you. Oh yeah. Wanted this whole thing. Oh no. Then Mi- took it all off. Oh yeah. Made me do it again. Oh no. Then said she preferred the first one. Oh what an. Crazy. What an. And the and then bride. Nick's like, let and me am tell am you I, about the bride. Am I? Am I done? And <laughs> the whole time you're having. A, am I good? Yeah. Oh, you were done ten minutes. Am ago. I good to go? I think so. Yeah, just yeah. a little bit. Just a little bit here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, every time, I, every time I get makeup done, the makeup artist, whoever it is, and they're all sexist, 
uh, <laughs> comment on how uh, when they put when the they go under rings. the eyes, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, you're very good at this, aren't you? You don't blink at all. I'm like, well, and they're like, you must get makeup done all the time. I'm like, well, yeah, I do. But also this is mainly from like my 19 to 23 stage when I was wearing eyeliner. And oh, so it's shit. like, I don't, I don't react. You could poke me in the eye. You were I panicking just... at the disco all those years. Oh, you better and... believe yep. it, son. You better believe it. Uh, Tux Chalk says Nick it. looks very sexy with the bronzer. Thank you, Tux Chalk. You look very sexy all the time. <laughs> uh, welcome to the show, everybody. Happy to be here. In fishnets. Toxic Chalk looks sexy in fishnets. It's true. We've it's true. seen it. Yep. I mean, that's, a, that's borderline too specific. I was trying to remember. <laughs> I was like, like what would we know? Camera. I'm like, no, we specifically that's did right. a logo going, I look sexy in fishnets. So you look good as a worm. Yeah. Mm, the man yeah. has great right <laughs> I had something. Remember how I went to say a story? And I was like, I'll save it for the show. And then I... I remember you distinctly saying, the last thing I remember you clearly saying yep. was, let's keep the top of the show short. <laughs> and then I remember yeah. you saying... Steph, can you put some bronzer on? I think we all have a standing agreement mm -hmm. that yeah. yes, we want to like move through the show and like keep it uh, going at a we certain get it, pace, Gus. but you cannot <laughs> restrict yep. the spontaneity. This guy. Oh yeah, that too. <laughs> which is the love <laughs> and the heart of back pocket. God damn it! Spontaneity. Can you yes. say that a little higher? <laughs> The spontaneity. No, I mean sit up. <laughs> she knows. Yeah, what and a bit. I know. And I, it's a bit. The bit is good. <laughs> the bit is still being played, and you ruined the bit. Yeah, okay. Work on your bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't actually remember the thing that. Uh, it'll come to you. It'll come to me, and I'll, and I'll interrupt whatever we're doing. That was the and last place you story. left it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> here somewhere. Uh, okay, we're excited to be here. We've got a lot of show coming up. Uh, why do we have a lot of show coming up? What? Because we're sponsored by uh, PlayStation. Plus, who not only have a lot of show coming up in Back Pocket, they've got a lot of games that they want to give you as part of your subscription. Hi, I'm Peter. And when I'm not dodging balls or being the one whose balls must be dodged, I'm making sure I don't dodge a great deal. So here are three reasons to check out November's PlayStation Plus games. Kingdoms of Amala Re-Reckoning is a cult RPG remastered, redone and released. Control the keys to immortality as the first warrior ever to be resurrected from the grips of death or re-resurrected in this case. But if you're in the mood to lie to your friends and who isn't, then check out First Class Trouble. This game has got it all, a fancy space cruise liner, flap addresses, and you can pull off a classic Pete, which is that thing where you say you're the traitor when you are the traitor to make your friends think, well, he wouldn't just tell us he's the traitor and then you betray them. But you don't need those friends because Knockout City will matchmake you with dodgeballers across the world. Throw a ball, throw yourself, and when you win, you can throw a party while your opponents throw a fit. And that's November's PlayStation Plus games. They're one ball a deal you don't want to dodge. And this ball is just stuck here now. Awesome. <laughs> Look at that face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, PlayStation Plus, given away. So normally PlayStation Plus give away three games every month as part of the, your PlayStation Plus subscription. And they're doing that this month. They're giving away First Class Trouble, Knockout City, and Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning. <gasps> Great. I mean, that's a, First Class Trouble, is that the, the yeah, Among Us yeah, style yeah. one yep. but that was in the fancy 20s? Yeah, sure was. Mm. Did you say fancy 20s? The fancy 20s. The fancy 20s. The fancy 20s. The yeah, but a like cruise liner. It, and... it was the 20s, but the future. So you were in the, a, fa the fancy you, future 20s. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you were in a space ship. Space yeah. gap ship. Because it was a boat, right? Boat in space? I think so. Space boat. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're doing that. These are all great games. Those are three really good games given mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. But then they're also like, no, you know what? We want to give away more things. Why? Because it is the uh, PSVR's fifth anniversary. We've lived oh, with PSVR for five years. So they're also giving away three bonus PSVR titles. Uh, that is the procedurally generated horror space game, The Persistence. Uh, you can shoot zombies in The Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners, mm -hmm. and showcase your sword skills in roguelike Until You Fall. And Gus, you've played two or three of these. I have, yeah. Uh, I played Until You Fall. That was the kind of like <clears throat> neon brawler that was a bit of a roguelike, I think. It was, it was exactly a exactly roguelike. roguelike. That was cool. Uh, Saints and Sinners, Walking Dead, really, really good. Mm. Amazing VR. Like Probably like still, I would say, one of the most fleshed out uh, VR campaigns. That but was one of the first games you enthusiastic, 
enthusiastically were like, Peter, you have to play this. I, I was because I was like, this is a full campaign with great mechanics and good atmosphere and all this kind of stuff. Guess what they've added? What Guess they what add? they've added? Oh, oh Zombies. Wave mode? Oh, there's a wave mode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you better believe there's was a wave mode. Is that a wave mode or water? <laughs> <laughs> it is surrounded by water. It's, it's during go. a flooded, like, New Orleans kind of vibe. I, and there's I a wave mode. In the become... 20s? And the waves keep crashing onto New Orleans. I love that you've become the champion for wave mode. I always have. I've just never really felt like there was a platform for me to shout out my love for wave modes. And here it is. You you, but modes. you had a nationally syndicated television show. <laughs> yeah, no. every, every time I did, they cut it. Every you, could time have, did. you could have done it backwards compatible on, on wave, wave modes. Wave modes. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, particularly because this wave mode. <laughs> because wave modes are not in fashion anymore. That's true. Well, maybe they're coming back a little bit, but, uh, but it's been like... It, you know, it's been supplanted by the Battle Royale. So uh, yeah. you're, you're out there, you're, you're bringing it back, which Champion is exciting. Uh, so that is six games that you get with your PlayStation Plus subscription. Uh, that is your Christmas sorted. You don't need to talk to anyone in your family. So head to uh, the PlayStation Store and redeem those if you've got PlayStation Plus. And if you don't, what are you doing with your life? Sign up, get those games, bada bing, bada boom. You got a ball in your face. You got a ball in your face in the 20s. You were channeling um, Kristen Wiig. Was that? Yeah. I feel like the 20s. The fans Yeah, there. It's, she plays that, on, it's that voice. Who's it's, the one? It's on the, it's on the, like, uh, the horror special. It's a black and white one. And she plays uh, the, wh- who's, who oh, played? About that. Who? You're talking about the Casablanca one? That's yeah. a very different No, 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 no. I was no, talking, you're talking about. where she does the horror one with Bill. Uh, with Bill Hader. Hader right? and, it's yeah. a, and she turns up as the woman who was uh, Dorothy in, uh, in, who's the actress? Judy, Judy Garland. Garland. Judy Garland. Yeah. Like, I'm Judy Garland. Judy Garland. And, and yeah. I brought candy. And they're like, these are pills. And like, these are for me. And these are for me. Oh, God. It's fancy. It's a good sketch. Go watch it. All right, good. Uh, okay, let's move on with the show with our very first segment, a little something we like to call. I'm uh, <laughs> just saying, what do you want me to play? Sorry, I got, I got so the bit. The music. I got it. I, I know. I was like, why is Pete turning this down? So why is I could everyone talk? looking at you? Why is everyone staring at me? I was so transfixed by the beautiful Brent Jones, aka Loki Cat. Mm. That I forgot to go. Ah. Just saying. What y'all been playing? Brought to you by Brent Jones, aka Loki Cat. Loki Cat, thank you very much for sponsoring this and for being uh, transfixing. And Loki Cat, uh, he hasn't he hasn't told me this, but I feel confident in saying this. Mm. Loki Cat is also going to give every one of our viewers uh, six games. Oh, uh, wow. yeah, it's so it's so nice of him. If you Great. subscribe to Loki Cat uh, on give his you Twitter all, account, all then- Metal Gears and all the time <laughs> he spent in them. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's going to happen. Uh, so thank you very much, Loki Cat. Your generosity knows no bounds. What else knows no bounds? The Utter is hubris only bad? Yeah, uh, I yeah, so. I think so. Yeah. Okay, the yeah. utter dick swinging power of Phil Spencer. Oh. <laughs> Gus, talk to me about what he did Swing this week. Out. Swing away, Mr. Swing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, thank you to uh, Mr. Spencer, his dick, and of course Microsoft <laughs> oh, for dropping oh, Halo, uh, Halo Infinite multiplayer. <laughs> dropped early. Uh, See, this is like Sony pay for the good plugs, and this is the, <laughs> yeah, this is the free <laughs> Xbox plug. <laughs> Swing that dick, Mr. Spencer. <laughs> uh, it dropped on Tuesday? Uh, Mo- yeah, Tuesday, Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning. morning. Uh, the Halo Infinite multiplayer, technically the beta, uh, or the continued beta, is now public, is available on Game Pass, is available on Xbox, and on uh, on Game Pass for PC and Xbox. And Steam. And really? Yep. Yeah, it's on Steam. Okay, there you go. Uh, and I finally... Got my sweaty little hands on it because I'd been holding out. I'd skipped all the flights that Pete played um, and skipped. Didn't get invited. Yeah, no, no. I got in the second one. I got invited the second one. I didn't install. (laughs) No, through. I was invited. (laughs) God damn it! (laughs) I was there. I was there. (laughs) We were all having a good time. I didn't want to go to the party. (laughs) See, it wasn't fancy enough for me. (laughs) It wasn't Space Twenties flapper. Uh, So I played it finally, and I was nervous in the opening moments because, uh, as I mentioned, I was really cautious of the fact that is is the way my in the face with a dick. My (laughs) brain has been wired to play COD, and I'm playing. Halo like as a multiplayer game for so long and I picked it up and everything that Pete said is true it felt so fucking great straight out of the gates like it just controlled so well uh, I didn't have any moments of like c- clashing of control styles it like it's not it feels like old Halo it plays like old Halo but it is adapted for I think modern control habits that people have picked up through games like COD and through more frantic shooters uh, and it's wonderful I've probably played like sort of 
four hours of it, just burning through uh, Big Team Battle and the Quick Play, the 4v4. I love the 4v4. I love the smaller uh, the smaller maps, the smaller How control points. How big is the, is the team in Big Team Battle? Uh, 12v12? Yep. Yeah. Um, this is last night playing with uh, with Pete, playing with Avexia, uh, with Reese um, and Gog. And yeah, it was just madness. Like the, the Big Team Battle I'm, I'm still learning to get good at because it's just like, uh, it's pretty hectic and we were playing Capture the Flag and we just got absolutely smashed. Oh, okay. Um, so it's a bit like if everyone runs off and... Because I like games where um, there are more people to distract people so that I can shoot them in the back. No, Big, big Team Battle is absolutely... My favourite place up. to shoot people. That's true. There you go. Mm -hmm. Big Team Battle is absolutely up your alley. That is where, where it's for. It's like just a big sandbox yeah, chaos nice. mode. You will sh be shooting people in the back. The only problem I'd say with it is that <laughs> if people play the way like a lot of people kind of play COD, which is split off and try and get your own kills mm -mm. Uh, in Halo, it doesn't work. It is about staying buddied up at least with a, at least one or two other what people. Going on there? Um, that's a failed backstab match. But the idea is if you've got people around you to support you, you will always get that kill of a few other, If you outnumber the other people that you run into, you'll always hopefully win. So it's like, it's big groups, but it's nice to stay in groups as you run yeah, around. So that's um, cool. that's cool. Yeah, it was heaps of fun. I, I love it. It's it's super glossy. It seems to be working really well. It controls really well. I've dragged some friends back into it on Xbox as well, and they were like, oh, we remember this, so I'm really happy with it. So yeah, going to play heaps. Oh, going to play heaps. <laughs> <laughs> You've been playing a fair bit. Uh, yeah, I've, yes. But... Uh, I've talked a lot about Halo. What's more to say? Oh, no, I, I adore it. I love it. I wish I was playing it right now. When Anytime I'm not playing Halo the last, like, three days, I've been going, God, I wish I was playing Halo. Mm. I am absolutely loving it. I just think it's so much fun. The interesting thing, because uh, and we've spoken about all the reasons why it's great. It, like, it's no different than the test flight, really, yeah, other than just, just more maps. More, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, it was solid then, and it's solid now. The uh, the interesting thing has been the stuff that sort of kicked up over the last couple of days with the uh, battle pass progression and that sort of thing. Yeah, and uh, I think it's yeah. highlighted a thing for me about like how I play games these days. And so, can you? I'm sorry. Can you just clarify? I, totally I, I, I saw I saw this conversation kind of playing out. The battle pass. The battle pass doesn't. You don't get any progression from what? So you get you you. You only get progression from completing objectives and quests within the system. Right. So you don't get it from like kills you don't or just, no. no. And so you need to cr complete a challenge. There is there's weekly challenges that like and they all rotate and there's tons and tons and tons. Why of them. do you think they made that decision so that the people wouldn't focus so much on just trying to kill people and we're like no? Oh, I think it's the game? it's it's the opposite. They've made it. They've they tr I think that they're trying to encourage experimentation mm -hmm. and like playing in different ways but what it means is people are going into matches just trying to do one specific thing and not and playing not the playing or, the objective yeah. and not uh, playing the team it's, it's like, like i need to get a bunch of warthog kills or something yeah. so they're not playing capture the flag when that's the main goal to win and, and yeah. so yeah. Yep, yep. there's been a bunch of our cry they actually came out today and said that they're they're already making changes they said yesterday we're listening to the feedback Good. the first change that they're making is that there's a there's now like going to be a one like I just want to quickly point out, because people are watching this footage, yep. this is footage that Gus captured of the theatre mode and he's jumping between all the characters. So this is a replay of the match, which is why some of the guns are doing little glitchy things. Oh, okay. It's yeah. not actually live oh, gameplay. Okay. Okay, cool. the, yeah. the actual gameplay, like, I've never had any, yeah, that's any good graphic point. glitches yeah, yeah, at all. Right. But the, it, when we were capturing this footage just in the studio early today... So in the theatre mode, you can jump between ahead. all of the different... Well, you can it's spectator mode. It's it's the same thing. They've had that for ages in Halo. And it records oh, okay. them. It yeah. recorded the entire match, and he's jumped in all the match data, and it's replaying all the match data. And he, he could jump into an orbit camera and... you know, it's, it's, you it's, can, actually. You, you totally can. Uh, yeah, right. it's free camera. Uh, it's like... You know, they've, they've had this <laughs> theatre mode since Halo 3. Yeah, 3. And obviously spawned off the back of Red versus Red Blue versus being Blue. a big part yep. of why yeah, the Halo yeah, yeah, community yeah, yeah, yeah. blew up. So, but it is a replay of the file, therefore it's being a bit janky. But yeah, uh, yep. uh, and so yeah. So anyway, with the Battle Pass stuff, it's interesting because I think that uh, lots of lots of the Halo stuff feels like it's you know from all accounts old Halo, yep. but with some changes that make it feel very new as well, and that's great. I think it's also got this feeling that it's like old ways of playing multiplayer games. Mm. Like when Halo came out, there's no battle pass. There's yeah. no, like there's no, you don't there's get no anything for playing. Anything. There's no progression. Like, you just oh, play and then you stop playing and then you play again and yep. that's kind of it, right? That's how multiplayer games were for so long with the exception of like ranked modes. Mm. Uh, and now that we've got the battle pass system in, I think that it's re really reset people's expectations for why you're doing something. Because when I was playing it, you get so little 
progression through the battle pass that it made me go, why am I doing this? Because inherently, and I'm sorry, but video games are a waste of time. <laughs> and so they're, they're an awesome pastime. But when I'm doing it, I'm like, oh, I walk away from it. And I go, if I'm not going really competitive in this, in, as in trying to rank up or something, like what am I chasing here beyond the fun of the thing? And even though the fun of the thing should totally be enough, I don't think it is anymore. Yeah. And so I like so and, and the frustra and the frustrating thing about it was like I, I played a um capture the flag uh, game. I got like I went like sixteen three six. I got all three captures, I got two uh, like returns, I played out of my mind, it finishes and it pops <laughs> up with my progression and it and it goes, You completed one of two matches today and no <laughs> objectives, and so I get nothing. Yeah. And then I was like Maybe I've played too much COD and it's rewired how I think about whether this is fun. I boot up a COD game. I go I have a relatively good game. And then it's just like all these fucking numbers <laughs> and I get 170,000. Yeah. It's all just yeah. like gratification. The season pass and destiny cool. is such a motivator for me. And I keep seeing all those little exotic strip fed yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And as soon as I hit 100, I'm like, and and if, I do if this game is dead to me, I've got no reason. To play. And and it is like I and that's how in COD last year or this year it was all like if I'm interested in the cosmetics in the battle pass, it pulls me through. If it's not, I'm like I'll wait till next season yeah. once I've like explored the new map. So I do think it's interesting that they've made this change that you get like one one like. Uh, complete a game quest is there but I still think that the fundamental thing is I feel like uh, whenever I do something cool in the game the game isn't recognising that I'm doing well well especially it, if it you does, just it does through the, the metal system and it does through but like, where do those medals go? nowhere but like yeah that's again, what I like, mean they yeah, go in yeah, your heart but, Nick fuck that <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, think, I, look, I think it's actually it's sad that that this is the world that we live in now that uh, like the best feeling shooter in a long time isn't enough for people to play like hundreds of hours of mm -hmm. it. Halo. <laughs> Halo isn't enough for you, Nick. Yeah. It's not well, yeah. enough but, for but you. But it totally isn't. It totally isn't. And, and there's a battle pass in it, so people want the battle pass. That's the battle the pass is a system issue. in it, and the battle pass should be good then. It should reward people in the ways that, that they want I to I think that's, yeah. that's what pass. I mean. Like, if I bought and, the premium one, I'm a, I, and it boosted me to level 25. Yeah. I have played 26 matches and I'm level 27 and a half. And, and I'm like, Ugh. And what are you looking for? Uh, we, would you want little dangly things to hang off your Halo gun? Yeah, and then I'm never going to go as hard as COD will with that stuff. And I, I wish they would, and I know Pete would disagree with that, but that's fine. Um, but I, I do think that just this, this, this constant drip feed of stuff is something. And, and it's, I don't think it's even just getting the stuff. It's the recognition that like you're doing well in this game mm. beyond just like my own personal satisfaction because I don't know I agree but not enough I know I agree with what Pete's saying is that it's it's sad that that's the case because it should be enough that this game is really fun and the reason you say I feel like playing it tonight is because I want to have fun with people playing this game which is why I used to play Halo mm. and that is a nice feeling to try and that I want to kind of uh, keep going for as long as I can but by putting a battle pass in there at all I think you're right everything you say is valid Nick by because it is there in some capacity there is a battle pass therefore it should be doing the things that we have trained that we are trained mm. to get mm -hmm. a response from from a battle pass. I think like based on what we've seen from 343 so far they've intentionally released a beta yep. with the battle pass as it was so that they can well it, the cynical part of it is that they know that people aren't going to like it and they're going to just they're farming data because mm. they are farming mm. data and Joseph Staden has tweeted about the fact that they're that's totally. exactly what yeah. they're doing yeah. they're looking at how fast people are progressing and they're going to make adjustments based on what they see mm. and they have proven to do that with Halo over the last year uh, so that's good the weird thing is that they've they've had like this isn't 343's first battle pass either mm. they've had one in Halo 5 they have one in Master Chief Collection Master Chief Collection is pretty good in terms of like drop rates, Halo 5 was a different beast because the drops were cards that you could use in the game to make yourself more powerful. It was like a it was a messier thing. It wasn't just cosmetics. Uh, but uh, in Master Chief Collection, it's 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 a pretty good drop rate. Yeah. I mean, I don't play COD, so I know that's like just a fucking poker machine. And I was saying off the but, back of playing Forza recently, I'm just like, why is this game not screaming how well and, I'm doing it? I mean, Forza was literally <laughs> yeah, poker machine. That's what I mean. It's, it's like, wheels and it's, but even, even beyond, even beyond the giving of things, I think the recognition of you is an important thing now. And I think mm. that <clears throat> I recognize that this is one of those things where it's like, um, it shouldn't be like this. You're totally right. Something awesome should just be awesome by itself. Cause the game's awesome. The game's fucking awesome. I cannot wait to play this for the next 10 years. I am so excited. 
but I'm also, I think it's also one of those situations where you go like, you have to accept the world for the way that it is in yeah. some ways. Like I wish that's, that's how video games work. They now. have changed. I wish I didn't have to tweet, but I have to tweet because <laughs> I have to stay relevant somehow. Like it's that <laughs> shit where you just go. Sometimes you just have to give into it. And so with so many other things competing for your time, I think that the game has to go. We know that other things are actively trying to drag you away from this, yeah. so we need to actively keep you here and not just rely on the fact that, that this could be one that's of the, the best shooters I've played in years. Right, yeah. is that they just need to have the huge player base for a long period of time. Yeah. And the way to do that is to just make them happy. In whatever way you possibly can, give them gratification, tell them they're a good boy, because that's what, what they about, want to hear. What um, about an in-game concert with Ariana Grande? I yeah. don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> she has to, because they won't let her be in anything other than Master Chief's no. <laughs> She can um, make it look cute. She could. She could. Uh, but God, it's good. Yeah. It's just so good. I am so enamored with it. It plays so phenomenally well. I'm such a Halo person. Over the last three days, I'm like, I'm a Halo guy now. That yeah. The um, uh, the the thing that the the only extra bit that I'll add to this is that I was playing with Gog, and Gog and I have for uh, a decade been like, Halo is the best shooter that's ever been made, and Halo has been out of fashion for so long now, and was not the best shooter for the last decade mm. and a bit. So <laughs> it's like. It's we're like finally like yeah, back, we're baby. on the fucking bandwagon the whole time. <laughs> we were supporting the Red Sox through a hundred years of never. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sport analogy, and I get it. Yeah, good. Yeah, <laughs> um, uh, yeah. I reckon <clears throat> check out the big team battle stuff if you're interested. At I will. All. I already have FOMO because I was so excited for Battlefield, and everyone was like, "Yeah, we're going to play Battlefield," and I was like, "All right, guys, let's go." And then Halo dropped their stupid thing Thump. like a couple yeah. of days later, and oh, I was like, what "Guys." <laughs> Hello? <laughs> I'm still here. I, I'm I, in a tornado. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and it's so and and it's such a solid launch. Mm. My God. Yeah. And again, playing as safe as they possibly can. It's still a beta. Yeah. It's not out. Yeah. This isn't even the real battle pass. The real this battle pass, it. you could dress up like the guy from Scream who I shot in Warzone this morning. <laughs> I was like, God. what? <laughs> yeah. Once I once you I saw the cell shaded. Uh, Duke, not Duke, what's he called? Uh, Judge Dredd running oh, yeah, around yeah, in yeah. black yeah. and white. I was like, nah, I'm done with COD. <laughs> I actually booted up Vanguard for one match. I was like, no, nah, this isn't doing it for me. I know you're enjoying it, but like... No, 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 I've gone over to Warzone now. Yeah, well, then knowing that Halo's out there as well, I just went across to it and just, as I said, just the tactile feeling. The noises of when you're hitting hits and when you get kills, the little oh. clicky armor sounds of the... Oh, I that's someone. That's the gratification in this game. That's the gratification oh, I need. I don't oh, need a pop-up so telling me I'm a good boy. I just need those little clicks of kills. That's what that oh. sound is, though. That sound is yeah. telling you you're a good boy. Oh, that's good. <laughs> um, the... <clears throat> A tip for anyone who is like me and finds most of the armor excruciatingly boring, go to the store and go buy the esports team's armor because the, it is the, the coolest shit. And it's like, why are none? Why is so, none of this so bad? Why is none of this color in the game? It's why is there. it all muted? It's in, the battle pass. it's in the battle pass. It's miles down that battle pass. But it's all like <laughs> muted, <laughs> scratched. Dark cut, like give me that bright, shiny Cloud Nine bullshit. I will like, say one thing: if I can take the sticker off that. I'm in. One thing that was delightful is I jumped in with those friends of mine who hadn't played it for so long, and we went in. And we're like, let's all play, and we all just went and customized our Spartan for like five minutes, and came back, and we were all the colors that we all were in Halo Two. <laughs> I was like, that guy's the teal one, that one's the yellow one, and I'm the like off green. It was like we're back. It was, just, <laughs> oh, it was cool. It was so cool. That. Uh, that, was nice. that was you played a shooter with some friends. Didn't I did. You? Dead, 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 <laughs> dead man's click. Dead, 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 dead. So we're tail carding these now? <clears throat> that works for me. Yeah. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, I also played uh, a mobile version of a game that I've spoken about recently quite a lot, which is my other game that I played with my friends recently, which is uh, Rocket League Sideswiped, mm. which is a mobile version of Rocket League that has uh, is also in, I think, an early access, only in the um, Oceanic region, which is something weird that we seem to get a lot of with mobile games. We got it with Diablo and with, um, <coughs> with uh, Call of it's, Duty it's mobile, not, I think. It's not weird, isn't it? No. Okay. <laughs> the, it is a... It's, a good test market. New Zealand and Australia is yes. used as a test market for the US audience because our uh, we like the same thing. Ah, so that's, that's okay. why they do it. Look at me get goals in good Rocket goal. League. That was a great goal. <laughs> Thank you very much. No problem. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> no problem. Uh, yep, this is me starting my mobile no problems team. Uh, and as you can see here, it's 
pr it, it's self-explanatory. It's Rocket League, but it is on a 2D plane where aerials play a bigger part in it. Um, this is me doing just a little 1v1. Uh, I I think this is great. This this is one of those things where it's just nice to play a pocket version of a game that has all the same sound effects, all the same UI, mm. all the same um, just sort of design and, and, and polish. Concept. Like, basically. And, oh. Yeah, and concept as well. So thank you. Steph is and invested. <laughs> yeah, it, it's heaps of fun. Um, uh, currently, it is well, like the volleyball in the game. Yes, yeah, it's it's very it's, it's very, it's it's very floaty. You obviously you've got a boost uh, that recharges over time, um, and you've got a uh, jump and a double jump. But essentially, uh, it it plays like Rocket League, but very very slow and floaty. Obviously, mm. because mm. it can't have the pace of. Um, of regular Rocket League. And if we skip forward a little bit here, please, Will, you'll see uh, that the, the other mode is there's a 2v2. So that's the maximum amount yeah, of team you mates you can have. Uh, and the goal, the arena is a bit bigger uh, and the goals are a little higher that's up. Higher, yeah, this right. is heaps more fun. The, the 1v1's a bit kind of stupid. Like, you just find yourself... You, you miss and, <laughs> yeah, and suddenly the other place... There's yeah, nothing yeah, you yeah, can yeah. do. There's some, this had moments of cool Rocket League-ness where it suddenly the ball just flings off in one direction or we get yeah. a save or something. And also, happens. like, someone is goalie. Oh. Yeah, someone yeah. can hang back and sit. You can park in the goal and go from there. Uh, did and play slime soccer. Yeah, I did. This is like this is slime pretty much soccer. slime soccer. Um, as I said, huge focus on aerials, so it's fun to get. Uh, that was an own goal, so we both apologised. Oh. But uh, there's all the things no in problem. there, like no the problem. little. Uh, yeah, just say no problem to that. There's the little call outs. There's the the ex. Uh, explosions when you get a goal that you can customise. Is it tied into your Rocket League account? Uh, not that I could see. Uh, great goal, Gus. Uh, there is the ability to log in with your same account, uh, yep. but I couldn't... It didn't seem to tie any progress or anything over from my... Those sweet skins. None of those skins. It's a whole new... Uh, there is a little battle pass. It seems to be free. Uh, so well. Is it good? Uh, yeah, I, by the end of this, I was wearing colors and shit. I was wearing a giant foam hat. So yes, perfect. That's yes. all I wanted. Halo, come on, <laughs> foam hat. Chef. Yeah, God, it's so funny. It's just very. Good. The Halo thing is like you guys are the dads and I'm the kid, yeah. and we're experiencing the thing that you loved as a kid. Yeah, and now I'm coming. You've to got it, it with and I'm like, version. I'm all hyped up on Red Bull and, <laughs> and uh, licorice, yeah. and you're like, I want to see where you take the helmet off and it's a fish head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, this looks awesome. Yeah, it's fun. Um, as I said, the nicest part, I think, is just booting it up and having like some obnoxious EDM song blasting in your ears. The menu and all the sound effects are the same. Um, Syntax is saying it, it should, it should synchronise with your Epic account, if I your Epic account has. I logged in into Epic with my Xbox and it was like the currency I earned wasn't there for two, match, for two boot ups and then I booted up the third time and suddenly I had all the currency. So I think maybe it's still... That's just, why they're testing. That's why they're testing in the Oceanic it's region. And also Epic and, Epic and Apple and currency. Is mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so <laughs> I, I think there's still a few bugs to iron out but at the moment it is free on iOS. I'm not sure if it's on Android um, but yeah, it's heaps of fun. I can see it chewing through my battery in... Uh, Are you going to keep gonna playing say, it? Yeah. 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 dangerously yeah. low that battery uh, <laughs> uh, yeah I'm away this weekend a uh, couple of flights so I thought I'll be playing this on the plane yeah. it's heaps of fun because I downloaded it for the ride home tonight oh nice yeah this looks awesome. I, I do want to try um, I do want to try it with a friend playing so we can see if we can like try and coordinate or do something uh, maybe it could be you uh, I know it is <laughs> But I will say, I have uh, in the time after I got this footage, I've won two games. It's not going to be so relaxing over here. I've won two games through forfeits, and you can spam the no problem in the victory yeah, screen, good. and it pops up over your head as a big obnoxious cartoon uh, pop out. So I'm very happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> very happy. Uh, so yeah, so it's fun. Awesome. That's Making me very relaxed. Rocket League sideswipe, mm. Stephanie. Um, yes, I've been playing a great game called Battlefield 2042. <laughs> we all remember that game, guys. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> no, um, I played with uh, Brainstorm, I played with Avexia, and Papa Vexia. Hey. Oh, cool. What a team. We were amazing. Um, I really enjoyed it. We were playing Conquest for like most of the, most of the night, and I felt like I was slowly kind of getting the hang of it. I really enjoy the chaos of it. The tornado stuff was crazy. I don't know. I know that a lot of people have their favorite battlefields, but like I'm, I feel like I'm kind of just new to the love of it. And I, I think it's really fun. I love the chaos. But I think what I really enjoy is that the hazard zone mode is kind of like the antithesis of conquest. Mm. And even though we played a bunch of hazard zone, uh, just Liam and I, um, by the end of the night, it was just the two of us, but, um, and we failed most of them. 
I found the like tension and mm. the stress and the excitement of it like so thrilling. I think hazard yeah. mode's a really it's cool such mode. Such a cool yeah. mode. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I, I really love it. And we were just like constantly like freaking out. I was like, I was like, we can't run out there, man. We can't run out there. And he's just like, oh, we, we gotta go. We just gotta turn and run. And then you'd be like, <laughs> I'm going for it. And I'd be like, no, man, no. It was just crazy. I, I just feel like there's a. Uh, there's a particular tension that I don't get in other shooters from that because everyone is just kind of being so cagey and careful. And then you've got this kind of mad rush to try and get the hard mm, hard drives yeah. and then GTFO. And like, there's always some kind of like action hero moment towards the end when you're trying to make it onto the plane. I really, really enjoyed it. It's, it's, it's cool because like the way that Conquest is, it's 120 something people playing now. And a lot of the people uh, reviewing it have come out and said like, it's a bit too chaotic, which is great that it's fun. Conquest? Uh, Conquest, yeah. yeah, yeah that right, it's yeah. Just, a, just overwhelming. You can't really focus in on anything. As you said, the fact that Hazard feels more, I'm not going to say realistic military wise, but it's like, what are we going to do now? Where are we going to go? Just have do to we think they're bad? So we, yeah. You, yeah. It is the way that you've yeah. got to come. And it's what I loved about playing things like um, Plunder back in COD, like it's still chaotic, but it's like, let's come up with our own objective. Let's work out how to do it. Let's like risk and reward. reward. And you just, it, it leads to such a well, nice- But I also, I, I, I also find, cause I feel a lot of the time in, in competitive shooters, I find my, myself always playing really carefully and then other people playing really confidently and aggressively and I die. Yep. Whereas I find in Hazard Zone, everyone's being really careful. Well, I was gonna say, yeah. that's the difference that in Conquest, if you don't get near people and engage in firefights, like you're doing badly, like you're failing there. Whereas, whereas Hazard, Hazard Zone in that, in those larger areas, it doesn't feel like the map is too big. It feels like I'm trying to like snake my way through this area as opposed to like, oh, I'm trying to take it all on at once. Yeah. And and yeah. that that sort of reserve thing means that those fights have that much higher tension threshold yeah. because you know that there's way more on the line because it was unlikely that you you guys were here in the... Well, as an extent, like, thing, it's like you, you feel like you have an impact on the map yeah. mm. because it is focused. I, th I feel like it's a really nice middle ground between Conquest and, uh, you know, Battlefield tried to do a uh, Battle Royale in... Five? Five had the flame, the flame circle wheel thing in the old World and, War II. And I think they learned from the, that failure and turned it into this hazard mode, which mm. is, I, I, I really like the focus of it. I like that you uh, you have objectives right from the start that feel like you're, you know, you're in control. I, I find, I'm finding in conquest mode, and I really like the game. I think the game is great. It's just so bugged right now that I just, I want to give it three months to yeah. just let it settle. Yeah, and also yeah, Halo's out. But um, <laughs> like, it conquest mode, you can, spend the whole half hour going between two different points. You go, you, you, you conquer C and then you go to F and then yeah, you come back yeah. to C because it got <laughs> taken while you're away. And it feels like you just, you're in skirmishes, but you don't get a sense of the whole fight. Mm. Like yeah. you, you might lose, but you did really well. And it's like, I just feel like your impact on a game is so negligible because there are so many people. There's so many people. I kind of, I, I guess for me, I don't care about that so much because I'm, grateful for the opportunity to be able to kill more people because everyone's just like distracted yeah <laughs> so uh, so i enjoy it but i think the thing that's frustrating about it at the moment is the vehicles like those hovercraft things are just fucked like there's sometimes you look at the map and there's just like five of them and mm. you just get annihilated by them every day yeah, i had right. multiple instances where i spawned in and like didn't even see the screen because i died so quick yeah, <laughs> yeah right. i i think just to add to that finally it's like the idea of like i think combat avoidance is thrilling yeah like the idea of having as you said to move through a map. Well, that's the see escape from Tarkov style. Yes, yeah. Thing and, and, that has and the, and the fact that from. the extraction point draws you out of cover at the last moment, yeah. and that's when you start to have these like last ditch fights with people. Yeah, and even that escape from Tarkov kind of being born out of battle royales in their original sense, which is like choosing who to fight and who mm. not to fight. And I just think it's cool that they've found another way to do that. As like, yeah, I hope it survives. I hope it keeps its player base. Is kind of what. Well, I'm, yeah. I mean, the struggle for them at the moment is keeping super loyal Battlefield players playing right now because it's just it's <clears throat> it's by no means bad and most games are fine but there's a there's an annoying bug every time I load into a conquest map it's something different every time and it's just like I haven't really I couldn't I haven't noticed any bugs when I've been playing but but the vehicle thing is dumb yeah, and they can. They, I've seen uh, hovercrafts just hovering up the side of. Yeah, the been, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you haven't seen any bugs. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. A bit, uh, that, I, but that's funny though. I mean, you're, you're right on that because the big criticisms that I've seen have been mainly, uh, or not mainly, but like a lot of them coming from people who really love Battlefield. Yeah, and so the difficulty I think the game has found itself in is going. 
We're not. We've changed enough about this that the hardcore Battlefield fans feel like it's not the Battlefield that they remember and the, the Battlefield that they're looking for. It's not distinct enough. We're, they're trying to appeal to a broader audience, mm. except that broader audience now has several shooters to pick from that are all come out within the space of two weeks. And so it's like, what, like if you're not the best in class, mm. it's going to be very hard for you to hold on to that. Plus your loyal Battlefield people are angry that mm. like everyone can now switch between like you can mix match class items and stuff. So you can't tell who is what on the battlefield. So yeah. all those little things where it's like hardcore battlefield people going like, well, that's not how battlefield, that's every other game, not battlefield. Yeah. yeah. And you're trying to please everyone and actually pleasing none. What, yeah. is, it, what so. is it about bad company two that people love so much? Cause every time I hear anyone talk about battlefield, they, they talk about bad company two. Like it was their. Well, I think you're thing. talking to a particular audience, which is me. And people no, our I mean, age. It's, it's not you. I, I, see, uh, better, I, see, I mean, I see, Bad Company Two is seen as the best. Yeah. Well, I, not. I don't think it necessarily is. Like, <sighs> Battlefield's always good. like. Bat, people love Battlefield Three. Chat is saying the simplicity, the style. It was the, 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 the destruction. destruction was awesome. The campaign was great. The characters were fantastic. It was super approachable. Yeah. Uh, the thing. The thing about it was that it was. I didn't play the multiple. Battlefield was kind of something through Battlefield 1942, Battlefield Two, and Bad the Bad Company series as well. It, it didn't have the scale that we now c come to think of Battlefield as, which mm. 3 brought in. Mm. 3 yeah, was like, right. this game is huge. Mm. Yeah, like, yeah, scary yeah. huge. Battlefield Bad Company 2 was a much more refined game. The, the, the uh, rush mode was uh, what made it brilliant the, because the map design worked so well with that mode. All the shooting always felt really good. It's it's always been like a PC shooter, really. Yeah. Uh, so it didn't have the arcadey field of COD. I think it definitely had a bit of like PC snobbery attached to Battlefield, sure. which I think still exists. Like I think yeah, you know, yeah. it's I think people Battlefield play fans are mad about a bunch of different stuff, but they're mad that it's not performing well on their yeah, rigs yeah. because yeah. it should. Yeah. Because and this, uh, this means that the, the, the engine is the engine is causing problems. The code is causing problems, mm -hmm. and it's like this should be the best. This should be like the pinnacle of sh like what a shooter is on PC, yeah. Yeah, right. uh, and it's totally not right now, <clears throat> which is unfortunate. Uh, yeah, I mean, Bad Company Two, much more refined thing, and then from Battlefield Three on, it started to get it's become crazy weather effects. And this stuff. is the evolution. Yeah. Of How do we keep right? upping it each yeah. time? It's also just heaps of fun. Like that campaign was so much fun. Those characters yeah. were so, and, and it was that real sort of like Three Kings. We're, we're on a heist style yeah. thing. Oh, yeah. I also think yeah. the multiplayer of Bad Company 2 wasn't trying... It was trying to be really good multiplayer, like anything yeah. released at that time would be, but it wasn't fighting against four other... Or, like, as many other shooters in the same way they are competing right now, like we're seeing in the last two weeks. Yeah. It just felt like it was something that was born out of, as you said, the destruction was really good, the engine was running really well, just things were all aligning at that point and people were ready to play a good... And, and online servers and kind of, th I think, were bringing people together really seamlessly and it was like, cool, this is actually perfect as an online shooter. Mm -hmm. And it just, I think it just was that right place, right time kind of thing. Uh, along with everything you said about it running well on PC or being a great PC shooter. Yeah. But now it is this thing of like, fight hard. <clears throat> How is yours better than every other game right out there right now? Are you going to stick with it? Uh, yeah, no, I definitely will. Um, I think even just, I en enjoy kind of anything that's going to help me get better at shooters, I suppose, or just become more comfortable with them, I, mm -hmm. I guess. And so, I mean, yeah, I like it. The, um, the In the same way that... In, and I will, I'll definitely give Halo a go. I just, like, I see that as, like, one of the sweatiest of the sweaty shooters, so I feel like... I'm yeah. Big Team Battle... Big Team Battle... Sweaty, it, though. It's, Big Team yeah, Battle is, is, like, a is. totally different game. Yeah. Like, it's, a, it's like a comedy. Where, <laughs> yeah. Whereas yeah. Arena Mode... Arena Mode is, like... We're working. I I personally don't like big team battle. Like it, to me, it's too like oh wacky and everything's going on and I'm supposed to be like zip line into a moving vehicle and that sort of shit. And I'm like no, I just want to kill someone and then smash them in the head and <laughs> try to like learn this map like the back and of my you head. Will, and you and I will. Uh, though I was gonna say like uh, like you with the horror games, which mm. I'm sure we'll hear about in a second. But I have had over the past year, I have had a renaissance in terms of like learning how to be a shooter player. Mm. And I am now like I I. I one of the great satisfactions, even though I say games are a waste of time, 
is seeing how over the past 12 months I have learned to be better at shooters. Mm. Like my shooter vocabulary has stepped up so much that I'm now like quite proficient in it and it's very satisfying and it's just time. So like, yeah. yeah. So I think that like approaching all of these and finding like, if for me it was finding the one that I settled into. With well, it's dogs. finding that little bit of fun too because it is time and that if that time is purely being frustrated the yeah, whole time, totally, you'll yeah. fall off it. So it is finding, sure, yeah. as you said, in Battlefield, you found the people and the environment you like playing in. And so it's like playing more of that will get you, you will get better. There goes the hovercraft. Yeah, Miss Silver... I mean, we're talking about Halo again because Miss Silver makes a great point about Halo as well having bots mm. and bot arena matches mm. so you yeah, can go yeah. in against bots with a team of humans, friends and shoot up bots and increase their difficulty and learn the maps and learn the yep, weapons totally. that way. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. what that whole thing is built on. That's the first thing the I did with those friends who hadn't played in a while either. I knew if I dragged them into a full match they'd be like, we don't want to play this anymore. Yeah, I was like, yeah, let's yeah. do a bot match. Too intense. Yeah. Let's just like go an absolute bot cull and it was great. Yeah, That's cool. Okay. Awesome. What else have you been playing? Um, I, of course, played something spooky this week. In Texas, horror hijinks of the week. So spooky, see? <laughs> the week, the week. Um, and this time I played something that uh, is reasonably old. I played Dead by Daylight, which I remember reviewing a good game like back in the day. Yeah. And have vague yeah. memories of it, and have not I thought about it, it old. or touched it since then. But it's had all of these updates and stuff, and people yeah, keep not, playing it. Yeah. I keep seeing people playing it, and I think in my head I thought it was a different game. I think I was getting it confused with Dying Light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> different game. Yeah, <laughs> very different game. <laughs> and, all the same um, words. And so when I would see it sort of pop up on Twitch of people playing that, and I'm like, why are people playing that? Oh, that's so true. Oh, this. It's so true. All the Dead by Daylight has all the things that you like <laughs> yeah. in all these other games that you've spoken about over the last sort of like six or eight weeks. I know. I could have been playing this the whole time. Um, so uh, I jumped into a game uh, with Reese, of course. I played with Jens. I played with Nigrotex and the Coastal City, who was like, I'm so glad to be here. I've played a bunch of this game. And I was like, cool. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. And I was like, how many? How, how much have you played? And he goes, uh, 400 hours. <laughs> he's so chipper Which and is, happy and smiling. <laughs> he's like, so I love random. thinking about it. He's like the sweetest, <laughs> most positive person in the world. Yeah, and then he's let me put like, you on a hook. <laughs> and, then, yeah, and then he's just like, cool, I'm going to kill all you guys. <laughs> Run away. <laughs> like, <laughs> Hang you on a hook, you cuties. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, we love it. It was very funny. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, uh, I mean, you guys are probably are familiar with it. Like, you have one uh, one person plays the killer, and there are a variety of killers to choose from. And because there's been so many expansions, um, you can play as, like, Jason from the Halloween series. You can play as Hellraiser. You can play as um, Leatherface. You can play as the so Scream me? dude. I said, put these guys in Halo. Oh, right. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> like all the classic kind of horror killers they've been, you know, they've been licensing. So, um, and they all, they all have different abilities and stuff that you yep. can do when you're, when you're playing the bad guy. Um, and then when you're um, playing uh, as a survivor, um, I was very overwhelmed. Coming into a game that has had a lot of updates and additions totally, to it, yeah, yeah. there were like seven pages of ability any, to any go game, through. Any game where the patch notes have a name, <laughs> like it's like, this is the X patch, it's like, oh God, there's so much. You're right. This We might have played this in the is last... That, uh, Jason from the Halloween series. Oh, Michael. Is Michael, it Michael Myers. Michael yeah. Myers. Jason. Jason's Who's from Jason? Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th. And, and Michael Myers is Halloween. Right. Jason's the hoggy mask. Mike Myers is the just creepy... Mask, William like Shatner mask. mask. Is oh, yeah, William Shatner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Freddy. Freddy Krueger? Freddy Krueger with the mm -hmm. bloody yep. face and all that. <laughs> might, might played, and they're all just scary white We all, We might have played this in the like last season of Good Game because we all did a capture where we all played it together and it was really basic. It was like turn, disable generators and escape. That was it. It was yeah, like yeah, yeah. all maps that just did that one thing. So, so um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of different abilities that you can do. There's like modifiers as well to the, to the map that that affect things, um, you know, different things that you can find and all that kind of stuff. The, the, I think the abilities and perks are really what make the game because, you know, there was, <laughs> there was one ability that I got that if I like, because you know when you try to free yourself from a hook, you have like a 2% chance or something like that mm -hmm. of, make, of being successful. But mm -hmm. there was Take one it. ability that I added that if I saved someone else from a hook, it would give me like an instant... Free hookage. Free hookage. Um, so that was really cool. And then there was another one that like allows you to... Um, see things like through the map and stuff. There was another one that when the killer looks directly at you, then you get some kind of buff. It, like just lots of different things that kind of modify stuff. I even had one, I had one thing that was like, <laughs> it was a toolbox that when I missed the quick time event when I was repairing the generator, fireworks would go off, which is not helpful, no, but very funny. Yep. So, uh, <laughs> so I had that on for a round. 
Um, and yeah, it's 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 funny. It's a funny kind of competitive co-op thing where one of you is just trying to murder the rest of you. Um, and uh, so, it's at its really core, it's way. still the same game. It, it's still the yeah, same cool. game, definitely cool. at its core. But um, yeah, there's a lot of different um, scary things that you can be. I'm still, and I found this with Haunt, Haunt Chaser. I'm just not good at being the bad guy. Mm. And it's not even that it's like, oh, I can't catch people. It's like I just never find anyone. And I don't know if it's because I'm just always so lost in life and in games mm -hmm. that I'm actually just walking around in a small circle but that's something that i would like to work on so i'm going to try and <laughs> be yeah, a better, better bad guy better at shooters <clears throat> better at hunting and stalking and hooking people yep yeah that's uh, just i mean you know i've got to have goals and, and also and i want to learn to bake freons <laughs> <laughs> uh so yeah i'm really enjoying it i want to play more um i think uh i think it'll be fun for us to play on the show even if we have a night we want to play again yeah uh, i've actually uh, I, I have played it, but I've never really played it. Like, I've played one or two. I've seen a lot of it. I remember the first time I saw it, I'm just like, what the fuck am I looking at? Like, yeah, yeah, what yeah. is this game? It I think is, Twitch has given it, like, a lot of life. They have, yeah yeah. yeah. yeah, I think it's because a little bit like Among Us, people like seeing people work against each other. I know that's exactly what you hate, but, like... No, 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 I, no, 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 no. I only, I only hate it when they're lying to me. Oh, okay. I only yep. hate it when yep. it, they're yep. like, yep. oh, yeah, I'm Pete, and yeah, I, f I put wood and uh, coal in the boat. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah. fuck you. And then you stab them in the it. back. Nick wants it. genuine, he wants to stare a murderer in the face yeah. who's not lying and says, I'm here to kill you. And he goes, yeah. great. Yeah, I'm fine with the other one. <laughs> it's the deception that you don't like. Yeah, That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, cool. But yeah, I, th yeah, I think it's, it is really fun, and it's, um, it's fun trying to hide and group up and save each other. And, and when you're sort of seeing the killer be preoccupied with something else, then you can go for the rescue. And yeah, it's quite tactical. Still yeah. scary or like less? Yeah, like, is it scary? Well, I was going to say, it's not like haunting or freaky. It's just kind of like jumps of being chased, I guess, isn't it? Like Yeah, like I, f I find it scary, not in a in a I'm terrified kind of way, but like... Um, Gets the blood pumping. Kind tension of kind of way? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, when, but more like, like because the tension of what's going on, not because like, oh, this is a spooky area. Yeah, 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 yeah totally. Because yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's a multiplayer <laughs> kind of um, competitive experience. You're more focused on that than being scared. Totally, yeah. totally. But also like some of the monsters that you play at are legitimately freaky. Yeah, right. Yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, I wouldn't mind checking it out as a group. I feel like that would be a fun thing to do at some point. Um, hey, can we get a little Will back in here? I realize we didn't speak to him properly at the top of the show. Mm. Yeah. Can I get a little world cut? Well, I know you haven't been playing any games. Oh, he's there. He wasn't expecting this. Oh, no. no one expected this. No, it was William. Uh, what did oh, you cook for dinner? Um, I cooked uh, bacon wrapped pork. What? It was like a, wow. it was like a, it was like a, a thing of pork with bacon around it. Here's the thing though. You got to make sure that your pork but is not longer than the sauce, that the, the thing you're going to put it in. Yep. And you've also got to make sure the bacon is long enough to wrap around the pork. Two yes. very important things to know. Yeah. So your pork was bigger than the pan and your bacon was mm -hmm. too short for your pork. Not yeah. Yes. These are, yes. These are like first moving out of home things. Oh, totally. Everyone learns. And, and also, <laughs> everyone learns. But also, like, this is a man with the metabolism of someone in his early 20s. What would you have for dinner? <laughs> I had pork wrapped in bacon. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> mm. Will, do you, mm. have, um, do you have an oven? Is that what you're cooking it in? Do you, yeah, Will, yes. you did you microwave that bad boy? <laughs> do you live in a house, Will, or are well, you just I don't in know. some sort of share cupboard? I don't want to. I don't want to make three. presumptions about. That's fair. That's yeah. fair. Yeah. His apartment. Yeah, yeah. Oven, oven. Yeah. Okay. Do you? Uh, well, have you done a good? Have you done a roast? No, not yet. I think one of the. I think people are daunted by the idea of roast, but when anyone moves out and they're like, I don't know what to cook, and cooking is hard, I'm like, just do a roast. Roast. You literally just put everything in a pan and turn the oven on and walk away for an hour, and then you come back and it's like free dinner. That's I correct. mean, it's not free. Free, free dinner. dinner. Free, free dinner. dinner. <laughs> <laughs> but it feels like you but haven't. Had I think that's anything. that's your housemate walking in, going, "Hey, free dinner." Yeah. Free dinner. <laughs> if it wasn't for the sixty dollars you spent and the two hours of prep of like getting everything. No, ready. but the prep. It's, there is no prep. You literally just like. Throw a knife at things and then shove it all in there. That's dead by daylight. <laughs> uh, Will's right. sticking his hands. Uh, Will, and one final question. Uh, do you have a roof? Uh, yes. Okay, yes. cool, cool. It Just does look sure. like Just daylight sure. in it his does. apartment. It's or like, it looks it's like fine. you're in another it's time zone. It looks like it's it, yeah, it, totally. it's it legitimately stays bright for a long time here. It's a beautiful it's city. Just this window, though. Just Other that window? one window. In Complete window. darkness. Yeah, yeah, nice. You got to put Josh on that side. You take the, even though there's the shitty stairs on that side, <laughs> you got the sun. You get that reflective vitamin D. Yeah. So. Uh, all right. <laughs> Thanks, Will. Uh, good. Peter, what have you been playing this week besides a lot of Halo and Battlefield? <clears throat> I jumped into the GTA trilogy. I've only actually jumped into Vice City so far. Did you see the flesh wall? I didn't see the flesh wall. 
<laughs> like the face stretch wall. I actually haven't Did you see seen the fat cars. <laughs> I seen the fat cars. Did you see the heavy rain? <laughs> I haven't seen chubby that. rain. Uh, I have seen a pretty lazy port, but from what I've played of it so far, it is the smoothest way to currently play Vice City. It's actually the best version of Vice City on PC, despite everything <laughs> that is massively wrong with it. Yeah. Um, and clearly there is. We were talking about this earlier, that the art style actually is suitable for Vice City because it's so, such a comic story. Yeah. Such yeah. a caricatures of all the people in it. We were saying that, like, uh, three, uh, three, it's a nostalgic because it's the limitations of what they could do back mm. then. Vice, and this is all with this kind of weird, shinier version of it that we're seeing. Uh, and from, uh, I mentioned in the news, I played San Andreas and it does not suit that one at all because everything is so gritty and all the story, all the characters are far more like, uh, yeah, as I said, more gritty and swearing a lot more and it feels like they're trying to make it a realistic story about his mother's died and he comes home. Here it's like, whoa, man, crazy song. I ran over someone. I've done too much coke. And you're like, uh, <laughs> the 80s. Hey, there you go. Okay. And 99 Luft Balloons is on the right. Yeah, exactly. Like, so yeah. it worked. I think that's the best one to have dived into. I just I, I, That's what I felt. That's why I jumped into this one. And, you know, I've, I've seen and heard all the horrible things that have, like, affected this game so far. Uh, it's such a good game that I'm willing <laughs> to put up with. Well, so far I haven't had to put up with anything. Just that it doesn't, like... It doesn't feel like a lot of love yeah. was put into it is the, the biggest downer about it. Um, because all the missions are stupid fun. It's, it's really built on top of the old code. So it's like, it's all still feels old. Uh, it, <laughs> clearly there's a lot of problems. Um, and I'm not saying that you should go out and buy this uh, because I think they need to do a lot of work to make it work. We were given code, which is the only reason I'm really playing it. I would have been excited to buy it. I, I mean, I was excited. You were excited, yeah. I was excited to buy and play it. We were given code. I would be disappo very disappointed, I think, if I'd spent money on this. Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't recommend that anyone goes and buys it now. But I don't necessarily think it's a doom story for them if Rockstar put some of their many billions of dollars into <laughs> making right with the people that they need to mm. make it right to. Um, but for me, I think I will play through Vice City like this. Yeah, right. Like, I, it's actually, obviously, it's a brilliant game, which is why people d d wanted to play it again. Mm. Uh, and I saw someone say, play it on PS2. It's like, I don't want to play a game, like, at 25 frames on <laughs> video console. Yeah. I'll have to pull out an RCA cable. Is Vice City the one on Game Pass? Or is no, San no, San Andreas, San Andreas is on Game Pass. And that's what I jumped into. And, and I think what's strange is that, like, some of the, the, the quirks of how this port was done, I think, uh, in three feel really awkward in San Andreas uh, do limit what it can be as an enjoyable product because I think one of the biggest ones I saw in San Andreas was that draw distance. There's no smog in LA, yep. which was done as a, a draw distance thing for the limitations of the hardware. But as you pointed out, it's like it actually made that game really moody. It was like cool. It, it felt like you were in a huge world yeah. and now you can it just see yeah. so far into it and it ruins it. And I think Vice City might be the one that I think just toes the line between the two and is the most enjoyable. I've but not been up in a helicopter yet and looked at it. Did you see those screenshots of, of, of San Andreas yeah. and up in the helicopter? Yeah. You're just like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, just, yeah. People are asking that who haven't necessarily heard uh, what's wrong with the game. It's built on the old code. It doesn't, it doesn't run as smooth as you would expect it to on modern machines. Uh, like, because that there still is, like, you'll hit a load wall while you're driving on a highway kind of thing. Amazing. And, like, just little freeze-ups and stuff. For me, that's part of the charm. <laughs> but uh, it's not good. Uh, and, I mean, you go to Twitter to see a bunch of the lazy stuff that has affected 4,000 bugs. Yeah, just a lot, of, a lot of bugs, a lot of shortcuts in getting it out quickly um and it it just clearly hasn't been given the attention and the lo the love that the fans have for it. it has not been reflected by the studio that did this port and th that's where most of the disappointment is is mm. that it feels like it makes it just feel like a, a cash grab and it, a really ineffective one because Everyone is fully aware of how awful yeah. these ports are and no one's buying it. And the, it's, it's such a funny thing, the world that we live in in terms of releasing a game is like, if you release a game 
If you're a known company that releases a game and it's not good, chances are you are going to spend more money having to double down and make your game good than mm-hmm. you would have if you just put a bit of work into it beforehand, a yeah. bit more work into it beforehand, and it just came out and it was like, okay. Like, I think about Avengers, New World, Cyber- this, Anthem, <laughs> Cyberpunk, Anthem, Battlefield 2042. These games that have all come out and like, you know, except for Anthem, the last year. Mm. And it's like, oh, this is company ruining unless you make good with yeah, people like, like rockstar need to make good now uh, yeah, like you said I they agree, need 100%. to make good it's, it's not crazy, just like they would, go they sorry would know that these problems are there surely so then wouldn't they just like price it accordingly like because i feel like the issue is they the shouldn't have released this. they shouldn't have yeah. released it they should have yeah, just yeah, gone okay. it's uh, like and and we're used to it like games are getting delayed six twelve months mm-hmm. A and week before this memory, was supposed to come memory, out. This like, was thing that was like rumored and then announced and announced to be dropping really soon and then has dropped subsequently very quickly. So it's like whether or not that's part of it got caught up in the fact that they were like, we need to push this out because people, the rumor mill has started and we need to double down on that because there's a lot of cash that needs wants to leave people's wallets. And in doing that, they've taken made a grave error. Or yeah. I don't know, I'm speculating. But also, yeah, but like, like, and I totally agree, but it's also like... Um, I'm sure, I'm sure there's financials and whatever, but GTA Online's doing fine. Yeah, like it, yeah. you didn't need to hit this for your fourth. You could have let this ride revenue. and kept it building, yeah, and totally. you would have been like, like, "God, what's it going to look so, like when it comes yeah, out?" The thing I wanted choice. to point out that you mentioned as well was you've not run into any of the hilarious bugs or anything game breaking per se. But the one that I saw a lot of people mentioning was the vehicles exploding really yeah. quickly. So, like it, that's challenging. Yeah, the you, you're driving around, you bump into a couple of little things, and suddenly the car's on fire, and in my memory, you're right. It lasts. Your car could be on fire for a reasonable period of time. You would have time to kind of pull over, get out. In this, you have to hit eject out of the car immediately because it blows <laughs> up so quickly. And I was talking to my, like my mate has experienced the same thing, Jimmy. And we forgive Jimmy for the moment. Uh, <laughs> Jim, Jim, don't turn on me again. Don't. Jimmy <laughs> theorized Jimmy that it could be that there's. A, a lot of stuff that was built into these games was tied to frame rate. Mm-hmm. So, all oh, right, it was the cars would blow up after X amount after of frames. After X amount of frames, and because this game is running at a much higher frame rate, the cars blow up very quickly. That's so funny! And like you don't get a you don't get an opportunity to save yourself in some. Sort of I watched a montage, <laughs> and you were right. Like you definitely got a lot longer in the originals. It was like, oh, I should probably get out. I don't want this car anymore. Car, yeah, and it's like this is like flame. Bang. And I think that that is so if, uh, and that is just speculation, but if that's what it is, that is so emblematic of the problem with this of like, so you're telling me that if I want the best possible experience of this, it's going to hamper the game. I need to run it at 22 frames. Yeah, running the game to make it nice for me makes the game worse. Yeah. And (laughs) And so, and so like, uh, people are saying that's like lazy. It's actually clever coding. Back in the day, on console, it was yeah. frame rate. That was just a smart workaround. But it's it's emblematic of how lazy the port is that they don't didn't recognize that that would be an issue in the code. And, and some of that also to just work. play test. That is but something that's going to happen to you numerous totally. times in a game. You would experience that. And the, think, are we okay with this? The most emblematic thing that represents how like little heart was put into this is the face the, wall. Is the face wall that was in but, the original? Oh right. Yeah. It is the. Uh, <laughs> is the donut shop, which uh, is called something and nuts. Something hard nuts. Hard or nuts, something. I think. Hard nuts, yeah. yeah. And what on top of the donut, on top of the donut shop, it's a, there's a classic donut shop in LA um, and it's like a big, like polygonal, and because like, it was hard to make smooth things. Yeah. So like this big poly donut on top of it and then a, a clear hex nut sitting next to it on the roof. Because it's a donut and so they put a nut. They put like the nuts in the bottom. I put the nut. I understand, yeah. In... All of the reshaping of the wireframe meshes of all the modeling and stuff in this game, the donut is smooth and the hexagonal physical hardware nut is a, r- a smooth ring. So tough nut. There you go. Tough, so, tough, tough nut. Tough nut. Uh, look up, the, look up tough. So someone in, who's gone through all the code is like, that needs to be fixed. That's a terrible smooth yeah, yeah, donut. A- and then, <laughs> then like, it was a they joke. They smoothed the donut. They smoothed the nut. They ruined the joke. So funny. And it's just it's it's hilarious. A that they- metal, a metal donut there. Yeah. So yeah, funny. Yeah, it's great. They made so it a funny. thick washer. Yes, Miss Silver, spot on. Well, it's going to be interesting seeing uh, how this goes. Because, yeah, they got to do something. Because they've just like... A 
essentially stolen. I'd like them people. to apologize. It was it was a heist. Back. It was a heist. It was a this heist. Was a, this yeah. was the latest GTA Online heist. Nice. Nice. I want them to say people. sorry by saying we'll make all three games in the GTA Five or possibly Six engine now. We're yeah, sorry. Totally. They are yeah, all we'll are. We'll Please. Um, from a game where the cars blow up uh, very fast to a game where the cars, I believe, contractually are not allowed to blow up. Yeah. Uh, I don't think any car manufacturer will allow Forza to blow up or severely damage any of the cars. Uh, I wanted to just quickly touch on Forza Horizon 5 again. I've been playing tons more of it, still really enjoying it. The reason that I wanted to bring it up, though, is that uh, I got my fancy Forza controller. Oh, yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. It's so nice. <laughs> I wish it had the paddles because then it would be my everyday forever controller. Sure. But it does have soft, like, um, steering wheel style grip underneath, which feels really nice. nice. Yeah. So, anyway, it's sitting on my desk, and uh, my son's favorite color is pink. And so he walked into the office and just saw it and freaked out. And he was like, Oh, wow. Oh, your controller. Oh, can we play something? And I was like, Well, this is a special one for a racing game. He was like, Can we play? And I was like, Yeah, sure. I booted it up, and he's sitting on my lap, and it looks phenomenal, like widescreen. Blah, 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 blah. And he's like, Can I have a go? I go, Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's going to be hard, but yeah. I hand in the controller. It's just like card directly into a wall. Can't like just can't do anything, and then I remembered seeing a clip um, <laughs> from Rudism talking about the accessibility features yeah. uh, in Forza. And will, oh, if we can right. bring up that clip when you have it, um, it's got a really great feature in there where you can slow down everything in the world, oh, yeah. um, but it keeps the physics system. I saw of you talk about thing. that too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. and so. I sat with Banjo and we sort of played around a bit with this and I ended up slowing the game world down to like 70 or something for him. And he had so see, much fun. Oh, just quickly, oh. you can see that they're still driving at 230 kilometers an hour. And the way that the car is like turning here is turning as though it's going at 200 kilometers an hour, like with the speed and stuff. Um, so all the physics stuff still totally works. It's just the reaction time becomes lowered much much more yeah. um and so this is a very cool accessibility feature uh and but for something for you know my four-year-old he was finally like oh i can kind of and he's still doing donuts because the physics system is still in there so it's still yeah. like when you start a slow spin it's like well you're just gonna spin out slower now <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah, but yeah. he it, it meant that he could like he can grasp what's happening and make decisions dodge trees yeah, yeah. Uh, and so i <laughs> i was like okay i need to run upstairs and oh, we're going through some renos at the moment so i need to just deal with some stuff I come back down in 10 minutes and he's like discovered 30 new roads in the game <laughs> and like and so he's having a total blast now and this was one of those things where I was like you know we had the whole thing a few months ago about uh, difficulty accessibility and difficulty and options yeah, yeah. And, that's, and I was like no it's fine like just you know whatever whatever and then I was like well my four year old would never have been able to play this game yeah. without this and that's awesome so uh, if you have kids and they're into something like this uh, it's you know what you've feature. got you got yourself a little achievement hunter in training I need you to unlock all these roads yeah. <laughs> oh totally yeah, yeah. <laughs> Daddy's going up to shake up a martini. <laughs> yeah, hundred uh, percent. So yeah, that's the uh, the accessibility yeah, thing. Cool. Forza Horizon Five. Uh, and then the other thing is, I finished Inscription. So I, I, I Gus, you have played. I have played up until a point, and then I have uh, I, I put it down, and I wanted to see how it ended. So I actually watched a playthrough for the, like the last hour or so, which I am not afraid to admit I it didn't <laughs> tickle my fancy in the way that it might, mm-hmm. might have for you. Mm-hmm. So I'm aware of how the story continues, um, and I loved it up to a point that I started to like it, but I yep. didn't really want to keep playing it as much. Sure. Anymore. So, yeah. so are you guys fine if I spoil some stuff? I'm not going to play this. Yep. I respect that it's a great game, but uh, I didn't think you. Were. I have a lot of games ahead of me that I just don't have time to play at the moment, and it's making me very sad. And this is not one of them. Peter, tell me about your journey to become king of the stoats. So, <laughs> we are going to spoil some things in Inscription, but we have a plan on how to do this. Uh, we are going to play a spoiler warning, and there'll be a little tag on the screen. If you don't want to get spoiled, just mute. We're not going to show any footage that's a spoiler. We're just going to talk about it. And then that uh, you'll see that graphic disappear and the spoiler tag will play again at the end and you'll know it's safe to unmute. So, spoilers ahead. So, this game is lying to you <laughs> the whole time. So, I love, like, this thing, the playing the cards with the guy in the house, Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm in love. Like, I just love this so much. It's phenomenal. Uh, I love that everything about this game. You play it. There's all these secrets in the cabin. You can hop up and walk around, blah, blah, blah. And then you get to the end of it and you beat him. 
And then the game stops and suddenly you're inside a computer and there's a bunch of video clips there and you click on it. Are you looking at a desktop? Yeah, yeah essentially, yeah. 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 Uh, and you click on it and an FMV video starts playing. And it's, it's, like six, it's like six movie logs. Yeah, it's like there. her story oh, layout yep, 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 thing. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, a guy starts talking to you and he's like, hi, I'm the lucky Carter. And it's a U- and he's filming a YouTube video where he unlocks in front of green screen and he starts opening card packs. And he, so he's opening these card packs and like going, um, oh, we found this and this, whatever, whatever. And he says that we've actually, I've actually bought these cards for, um, that's the card game of inscription. Um, and this old pack, this lady didn't know what she had. So she, he starts opening up the inscription card packs, hoping to find a rare one. And he finds a card in there that's already, the pack's already been opened. And there's a card in there with uh, coordinates on it. And he's like, oh, this is weird. And then the video stops. And the video starts again. And he's looking up the coordinates. And he's like, oh, this is like a real place. Video stops. Video starts again. He's out in the woods filming this for his YouTube channel. Done, done quite well. Lots of little like, what the hell am I doing? Yeah, like, like really at, well acted well. Yeah. 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 He then goes in, he digs up, this, he goes to the corners, digs up this thing and there's a floppy disk. And he's like, right. Goes home and he's like, okay, I'm going to play it. Puts it in. I'm sorry. He doesn't have a floppy disk player. He, no, no, no. He buys oh, one on thing. eBay. Yeah, he buys one on eBay. Sitting on eBay oh, going, okay. how that's the fuck? That's the step that was missing. Yes. How much yeah. fu- how yeah, fucking yeah, hard yeah, is it to yeah, get yeah. a floppy disk? <laughs> yes. On yeah. eBay and you see him buying it. And then it, it gets delivered and then he puts it in. Um, and so, and then, so when you boot up the game for the first time, the start menu has new game, but it's blurred out. And there's just continue and options and exit. So you're like, oh, weird. Okay, continue. You... Then uh, the FMV section stops. He has booted up this disc that says inscription on it. You are kicked back to the main menu. And now there's something there that says new game. And you start a new game. You're now in a Zelda overworld style game where you're wandering around a Game Boy kind style. Like, kind of like Pokemon, I'd say. Poke- yeah, yeah, yeah. A, more, yeah. a Pokemon game. Wandering around. Now you're in a different card game. Beating bosses in a Pokemon style card game thing. You are still playing the. It, so it gave you a literal new game. Yes. Yes. <laughs> with a hint, with while still a card game, four entirely new card mechanics. Like in, these could be four new card games completely built out in this game. Which I, I agree. They are still like you're battling with like four v four rows of four v four, and you're doing what essentially we're seeing here, which is that first half of the game. I'd almost say, but as Nick mentioned, suddenly things like how you can play cards changes because it's now a built-up currency versus it's how much you had to spend with the squirrel sacrifices. Like that's changed. So at its core, it has changed. It's like the way you it's play changed card in, a, in a way in which card. Yeah, like it is a new card game. Yeah, yeah right. You play through all of this. More FMV starts. Dark, shady shit starts happening. I tap out. You tap out at this Just point. Just before those last FMVs, I did not care for this Pokemon Star one as much. Uh, it, it was no, that's nowhere totally near as fun no, as no, what no. I had with this, and that's my reasoning. 100%. That, yeah. The Pokemon part, while interesting that it changes, is the worst part of the game. FMV starts. He starts discovering that this, incept- this uh, inscription game has been around for years and could, Jumanji. And could be killing people in real life. I won't go into the whole story because it's wild and it's totally worth playing. But then you finish the second set of FMVs. You're in a new fucking card game. You're now in a robot future card game. And it's this ca- cabin style, except you're fighting the fucking stoat. Because the stoat is actually a robot who has been trapped as a stoat card. Who is slowly turning into a robot in that first game. I kept playing yes, it going, the what's head going on? Squarer? Slowly turning into a robot and getting sadder and angrier. And I was like, okay. You then play through the whole, basically a whole the thing with all new mechanics again. As you are going through the future one, there's things to explore in the future cabin style thing, blah, blah, blah. And then it turns out that you've got four basically gods trapped in this game and you need to start and you need to kill them. The stoat computer thing is trying to inflict this game on the world. The game, because I'm, I can't even go into the end of it, but there's a whole ARG that launched around this because there's all these hidden coordinates and stuff in the game. Yeah. In real life, people have gone and dug stuff up. And there's been stuff hidden around the world oh my that gosh, the developers like put geocaching. There. Yes. And 
It turns out that this game has been around since it was the disc, the original game was a card game found in the pocket of Hitler when he shot himself, and it actually contains the devil. And the card game has been killing people for centuries, and the and the girl who died, who had the original card packs that the lucky card bought, was killed by the game. He contacts the card company. He's like, what's going on? Did you ever make a video game of the inscription? They're like, what, tell us we need it back, blah, blah, blah. They come to his house. And the end of the fucking game, you play the whole thing. There's all these cards. The, you beat all the bosses and stuff. You will raise the card game within its... So as you're playing them, you start to delete the game and all the components of the game start disappearing around you and being deleted. Yeah. It gets to the end. The final FMV thing, <laughs> he hears a knock at his door. He goes to answer it. It's and Hitler. No. It's, it's a suit. No. Tim. It's a fucking girl who works at the card company. She shoots him in the fucking head and then steals the disc. And then at the very end, there's a hidden thing where the fucking stoat ends up uploading the game to Steam and you are playing the devil game it's fucking wild and at one point barjo was a card that was played against me barjo tv's barjo you start playing your steam Bar? friends as cards oh. like, start designing yeah. cards i knew you didn't do that bit but you i was like i didn't know a if you card that gets sent off over the internet to someone who is currently playing that's the what game. i thought it was doing at the and start and they send you a card as there are so many fucking ideas in this game. Like, it is... Oh, my God. It is so... It is fighting so hard for my game of the year. It is incredible. It is incredible. I, yeah. It is a fucking joy. And beyond that, if they just made this... Then I still I, would have adored it. Then I would have been it. happier because the the rate in which you got more like psychotically excited about everything that happened, I just got more and more. I just like, and I was watching it to be fair, but I was like, this is why I checked out. I loved the mystery of this first, I guess third, I, you mm. would call yeah. it. Um, I and for anyone who's played it up until this point, up how to, long is this third? I would say oh, like maybe like three, three to four hours. hours. So it took yeah. me about twelve hours. To and I, I did yeah. genuinely get to a point where you were doing roguelike runs. I think you might explain that the first first time we yeah. talked about this where it's like it, you need to beat four bosses in this first one and in doing that uh, discover some things in the cabin i got to the end i beat it but i forgot to do one of the steps in the cabin so it just uh, sent me back yeah. and i was a little frustrated i contacted nick i was like so i finished the game and he's like oh, no you haven't yeah, and i was no, like you were like I, I think i finished the game i was like what have you? What did you just do? He goes, I beat the guy at the cabin. I was like, right. So you're one third of the way through the game. <laughs> and I, to that I was like kind of excited. And then I went back and was like, I really, I actually stupidly missed something. I was like, I was going to do it anyway. I forgot to do it before beating him. I went back and I didn't have the right modifiers to have a really good run. So I had a failed run that got me three quarters of the way there, which left me frustrated, but really excited to play again. Mm. And there's one thing that I loved, which is the totems, which are essentially a head and a body. Oh, and the so head is corresponding to the type of animal cards mm. so there's like squirrel heads there's uh, reptile heads there's uh, wolf heads and then the bodies are the modifiers underneath which are like when this card dies it comes back this card is an instant kill and you randomly buy those or get those bits of totems and put it together and always have it on your table if you have a squirrel card that, yeah, never, that dies, never dies you are a finished god yeah, yeah. so yeah. I, w I got that my first run yeah. and I was like I need to do this again so I did two more runs until I got squirrel god and I had it I was like this is fucking awesome Awesome. I'm playing the game right. I got to the end. I did everything that Nick mentioned. It was like, oh, you need to get this thing out of here. I was like, did, the, did all that. Got to the point where the game pivoted. I was like, love the FMV mystery. Love the mystery of the cabin. He was going to the cabin. What's it all mean? It just kind of lost me by going crazier and crazier for crazy's sake. It felt like the Pokemon game style thing I liked, but it, it spent so long setting up how to play this game. There's like a long tutorial at the start that's really mm -hmm. nice at letting you understand it all. And he's like, I think you're ready to learn this step in this step when you move into that Pokemon card I, game it doesn't teach you anything yeah. it just goes rules of change <laughs> keep up I love all the secret stuff and I love the fact that it's changing but if I had to play multiple different card games I think I would lose well it. that's yeah. I, again I would say it's not a different card game but it just changes enough that you go I, do, I can't I'm relearning. I'm relearning this and I'm not I, I, I can't master this in the way that I've put five hours into this game Especially and then it does that two more like times feel like you finish something and then you discover that I was, you I was okay with that I was yeah, ready okay. to keep playing but it was the fact that it was trying to then make me keep up without teaching me under a new guise, yep. a new game. And the mystery I could feel wasn't going to start delivering on what it was promising. And it's like sometimes just not knowing is cooler. I think having Hitler's devil with a gun turn up at the end, I was like, when I skipped through a Let's Play to see where it goes, I'm like, 
I'm glad I didn't play it through because I would have been pretty disappointed with that. I love that you. I, but it, it, what? It's the journey. Like it's so. The it's yeah, the of course. Of how yeah. this information is revealed to you. How everything. How it keeps building. Yeah. The insane shit that they do within the framework of a card game, and then the best part of all of it, the guy who plays the Lucky Carter now has a YouTube channel where he's the Lucky Carter on Lucky great. Cards. <laughs> it's just so. It's just. Great, it's, great. A, it's a. It's a. It's a fucking perfect video. I think it had like three more layers of of uh, extra. I don't, know, I, want to say, I don't want to say crazy, like extra deep deepness that yeah. I didn't need. I was ready for a cool You're card game. You're a simple game man and you want a simple game. I want a simple, <laughs> I want a two twist structure. Yeah. I don't need <laughs> seven I'm so and something seven that full on. Uh, I respect the shit out of the start of this game and I loved it while I was playing the start. Yeah. I would almost like, I, I kind of wish there was a, not a, not a wave mode, but I wish there was an endless mode to play that. Yeah. That first actually mechanic. kind of wish. Yeah, that oh, like <laughs> that as an endless <laughs> mode would be great. So uh, and so we could finish spoilers. We could finish spoilers. Spoilers over. Uh, thank you to everyone for bearing with us. Uh, I do encourage you to go play it. I will say that um, the dev has come out and said that since there was, he was expecting more bugs in the game, since there have been so few bug reports, <laughs> he's spending that time developing more content for the game. Good. Awesome. Great. Oh, it's just the best. It's just the best. God, I love a game with a vision and it executes its vision so well. That is what we've been playing this week. Uh, just what a, what a week for video games. Good Lord. Uh, all right, we're moving on now to our very first ad break. We'll be back right after this. Meet Nathan Rohner, a mild-mannered game dev and VR enthusiast, but a freak jewel severed foot accident has given him hot tub cars for feet and turned him into Roller Star. By day, Nathan must deal with the ever-crushing burden of being a brilliant indie game developer. But when the evil Dr. Pocket decides to steal all his money and not make his custom Patreon commercial for six months, you must use Roller Star's flowing locks of customer loyalty to smack that pocket back into place. Patreon? More like... <laughs> and after a hard day of crowdfunding injustice, Rollerstar sloshes into the pants of his lovers with his sexy dual jet hot tub feet. <laughs> and when it comes to cruising for a feed, Rollerstar rolls right into the thick of it. Hungarian slop doesn't stand a chance with Rollerstar's high powered hot tub boost, leaping over the Central European cuisine with ease. Don't worry, kids. He washes up real good. Roller Star. Roller Star comes with everything you see here, plus everything you don't, including billions of hot tub-borne diseases. Is your thumb chafed? Calloused? Does it hurt when you headshot the wizard from the moon? You've probably got Destiny Thumb, a condition that affects one out of every one Destiny players. Lucky there's a Vexia. Just apply a Vexia thrice daily to the affected area. Side effects of a Vexia may include heart murmurs, heart whispers, heart shrieking, jam tongue, deep vein thrombosis, shallow vein thrombosis, elephantitis, giraffe neck, Truman Show syndrome, me, myself and Irenitis, the quakes, the shakes, the shake and bake, the bacon snake, the snake and rake, foodborne illnesses including breech, banana and chicken caesarean salad, bulging vein, bungee mane, imposter syndrome, composter syndrome, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, beaver fever, rat bite fever and Saturday night fever, facial blindness, severe facial remembrance, alien hand syndrome, mermaid foot and in some rare cases, Destiny Thumb. Do not take Avexia if you are also taking medication for Fortnite Fungus or Dota Dick. From God, your Dota Dick, Dota Dick, Dota 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 Dick, Dota Dick, Dota Dick, your Dota Dick, from God. Dota dick, 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 Dota dick.
Hello Deck, welcome back. Thank you very much to Grim Pixels, Skiverick, Rollerstar, and Avexia for your unwavering, continued, undying support of us, the back pocket team. Also Green undying. Content. Also undying. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. Uh, we appreciate it very much. If you want to become a patron of the show, that's Lose on as a shit for slash <laughs> back No, back pocket. Patreon.com forward slash back pocket. What were you saying? Nothing. Something about this? He did. Oh. I just said Gus lives on in that pillow. He does. Yeah. Forever and ever. And, and then you find out the pillow is Hitler's. The Hitler's <laughs> the stoat. Um, uh, I'll tell you what is also exciting is that the um, uh, he can't help himself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Without the context. Without, Without the context. Without the context, yeah, sure. But that was it a spoiler. We all know <laughs> Hitler died in the bunker. Do it. Good save. <laughs> no one knows how Hitler died. I haven't, I haven't finished World War II yet. That sucks. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, that was better. I'll tell you what, <laughs> what, what, what is not a spoiler uh, is the Game Awards announced that their nominees uh, for Game of the Year. Uh, the Game Awards actually taken on some, uh, I feel like, relevance over the last couple of years and have become, I think, Keely has cemented his, his, his place as... De facto, like Daddy of grand yeah, Daddy Oscar of, of games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah totally. It's the one that it's like when IGN released their Game like, of the Year list, it doesn't make the same heat as this. Did. No, totally. yeah, yeah. He he definitely seems like he has a lot of power now, but he seems like he's a pretty nice dude. <laughs> mm. So not like what Hitler. Hitler. Yep. Um, <laughs> hey, uh, what won last year? Uh, for, uh, uh, no, it was uh, 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 Hades. I think, I think okay. that <laughs> 80s one. I like that it had a smooth little jazz know, drum beat. I, I, know. Know the, I think it was. I don't know what that was. I, was I don't like, know what that was. Uh, oh, it, or was it Last of Us Part 2? Was it Hades or Last of Us Part 2? It was two? Last of Us Part 2. Oh, oh Rob. Part two Rob. Last year? Yeah. Wow. Everything else got. Oh, yeah. Hades won everything else. Uh, anyway, Game Awards. Uh, they announced their Game of the Year nominees. I thought we would just take a quick look at them and see how That's we good. feel about this. Uh, we've got Deathloop, It Takes Two, Metroid Dread, Psychonauts 2, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, and Resident Evil Village. Should we Steph? all? Did oh, we do yeah, it? Yeah, I was going to say. Should we all pick one game? that we wow. think out of that? We just get one. Oh, Game of the Year? Well, yeah, out of that, out of that list, the Pocket League. Well, I would say, yeah. Well, I would, mm, I would say one that you'd pull out of that because there was some controversy over the list. But oh, I want to see that. Show me the list again. I haven't seen it. Take a look at the list. This is fresh. Deathloop. It takes two. Metroid Dread. Psychonauts two. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart and Resident Evil Village. What was the controversy? Well, uh, some of the controversy over the past couple of days, and I agree with this one, is that Forza is not on there. A, oh, yeah. it's the highest reviewed game, uh, the most highly reviewed game of the year. But also, I think, a game that totally deserves to be on there. While I love It Takes Two, Psychonauts 2, and Ratchet and & Clank, it does feel like three of the six games on there are, like, 3D platformers, family-friendly style things, in a way that it's like, game awards are hard, award ceremonies are hard, thousands of games come out, we've reduced it down to six. Um, but... Th having three from this one like category of games represented whereas i feel like you could like i personally would probably drop ratchet and clank or resident evil village from that list and put mm. in put in a four to put in just something that like doesn't because i look at it takes two psychonauts two and ratchet and clank and i'm like oh so those three are kind of going head to head for the mm. the feeling of this thing like yeah if you want but, but a I platformer to win it's like the choice between those as opposed to but I think that like the genre is kind of irrelevant. You don't yeah, I agree. you don't pick a game from like one, the best game of a, a, a genre totally. and put that in in the yes. category. It's 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 the game that does that genre really well. And if it does that, then it deserves to be there. And all those games and that just shouldn't exclude it from its story or other things in it that are like Resident Evil also has a story in Psychonauts. Totally, has, so yeah, like, totally. I for, for me, I feel like it's those three games are playing I, I would, a similar space where I'm like, oh, I would have liked to see like an inscription. Or a Forza, it's, something it's where easier it's easier in your head to put them head to head. Those games, yeah, because yeah. at that point I'm like, oh yeah, this is like the yeah a bit of the variety. Anyway, yeah, I, I, I hear what you're saying. I yeah, mean, indies, that was my reaction. Indies, I feel like indies are always going to get shafted here. They're, they're like unless you're Hades, yeah, yeah, unless you're Hades. <laughs> they're kind of like um, the foreign language film of the Oscars. Totally, yeah. And we yeah. haven't had our parasite moment yet. Yeah, 
except for Hades. Oh, well, they haven't. But yeah, that's totally that's, true. That's what I mean. No, yes, yeah, you're yeah. totally like, true. Yeah, the Game yeah. Awards haven't had that moment where like, oh, actually, we need to consider They're all of parasite these. Their parasite moment. Fourth Reaper, the Forgotten City, something like, yeah. La La Land. <laughs> Wait, no, it was. <laughs> it was Moonlight. Moonlight. <laughs> it was Moonlight. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, I, I, would, I would drop Rose Evil from yeah. that. Do you, feel, do you like the list, though, broadly speaking? Yeah, I guess when I think, this is one of those years for me, and I know it's like the last two years have been hard for developers, COVID and stuff like that. Like, this has been one of those... It's been hard on all of us. Don't give them a break. Fuck them. No, but I just mean, like, there hasn't, there hasn't been, like, a bunch of games that has been released this year that I've been like, wow. That, like, got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I think for me, like, It Takes Two is the game that I still really, mm. to me, feels like the most uh, original experience that I got to the end of it being like, wow, I've never played anything like that. Yeah, And, okay. I, and I really yeah. felt like that was a cool... That was a really cool, well-made, beautiful yeah, game. Cool. No, yeah. Sorry, yeah. yeah. No, you're right. We can, we can pick from this. What, what, are you, what do you like on that? I really agree with It Takes Two, but Metroid Dread was such a great experience mm. from start to finish. So much love for that. Like, so it just, it was, I have such a fondness for just the, like, I, I gotta say, like, the six sessions I just blasted through it was like video game, video game, video game. That's just what was going through yeah, my exactly. head. It just felt like I was, I was rushing to the TV to sit, to finish my dinner, to sit down and play a video game again. Whereas, like, everything else was this wonderful sort of, like, experience to share or this, like, horror. Of, I, 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 Resi shouldn't be there. I don't know why Resi's on there. Yeah. Yeah. weird but um the others have interesting things that i hadn't experienced before metro dread was just the perfection of things i get, mm. i love getting out of video games so yeah, yeah that'd probably I, be mine. the interesting thing to me is that like most of these games we picked for game club uh, psychonauts i think th four holy of them shit, yeah, yeah four, four of them, them we have <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, and, and we tossed up Metroid. And, and we did toss up. It was just you guys were less hot on the idea of having to play Metroid. And yeah. Totally fair, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that was for <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy is what we've chosen yeah. to play yeah, instead yeah. of that. Uh, and Guardians of the Galaxy just, to me is a better story than it. A better story than... Ratchet and Clank? Oh, <laughs> Ratchet, Ratchet, no, I just, does Ratchet and Clank have a story? No, I, I just, uh, for some reason you were comparing them the other day. Yeah. Like, I would say, I would say it, Guardians is a better story than all of them. Yeah, I would say all of them, but I, I, but I haven't played through all of Psychonauts 2, 2 yet. I've played the first few hours mm. of Psychonauts 2, and, and, I, and it's fun, but I don't think the story is the selling point of that game to me. No. But like Guardians of the Galaxy is really, really hitting its notes for me. Dude, um, it's like but, it's, it's a good Marvel movie. That's what it is. It is. A good and it's Marvel a movie. long Marvel movie. And yeah. It stays impactful the whole way through. I'm really enjoying it. Come watch us do the game club streams of Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. And they're almost done. But uh, Pete's plugs involved. <laughs> they're almost done. They're almost done. They're almost done. <laughs> I won't waste and time anymore. Stop. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, I think that you know there are some glaring omissions, but I think it's interesting that the the thing that's interesting about the list to me is that we look at games in the same way maybe that Jeff Keighley and his crew look at games in that like. They're the ones that you expect to see on that list as opposed to things like Forza, which feels like it probably deserves a place there. It's um, so hard. I find Fort Forza is one of those games where it's like it gets better and better, but it's also kind of the same. So it's hard to see it up there. Like it's like a yeah, in F terms of FIFA like FIFA up there the or whatever. The loop is identical from minute one. It's through iterative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is it's always like the, polishing. It's hard it for is... them to do anything that's revolutionary in a game that is... Well, it was like with the Oscars where uh, like... A superhero movie would never be nominated until they made it 10 nominees. And then it was like, oh, okay, we can add them all in now. Like, we can add in The Dark Knight or whatever. Because, yeah. like, it, it, and Forza would make it on a list of top it's 10. Funny, like, isn't it? It's It's yeah. like, um, it's, it's like, the, just like a comedy, it, will, it just never gets an Oscar. You can't. Yeah, it's yeah, like, totally, yeah. <laughs> but what was your point, sorry, about. I, I, like, like I, I think that it's like we have looked at it with the same scope that they have and maybe not necessarily you we look at it to criticize picks? games and they're looking at sorry you mean for our game club picks yeah yeah sorry that's what i was talking about obviously we drew from the list while it was like before we knew what the games were the yeah. idea for mm -hmm. us being to criticize them but we critique critique, critique. <laughs> yeah. well, well, well unless criticize. it's 12 minutes yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's like it's it's interesting that they're the same games it's like they're the they were the pillar games through the years yeah and but they're all there, even though they weren't all, like, I mean, Resident Evil was the most, one of the most marketed games. It was mm. one, the reason we looked at it really is mm. because it's a Resident Evil game. You have to do yeah, it. Yeah. So it's on the list, but it doesn't really deserve to be really, except for the fact that everyone knows that it exists. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, know, this I, is what they, this show is. Yeah. It's I, like, it's the, just the best the, example of this, of this kind of conundrum I think that we have with the Game Awards I think is is the year that Forza came out uh, sorry it was the year that um, Rocket League came out and it was like 
how do you put for game of the year a game like Rocket League, which is arguably mm. a perfect game yeah. like, in what it sets out to do, mm. in in how successful it's been and how fun Broadly it is Broadly enjoyable play. it is and, yeah, everyone, yeah. yeah. Um, against, like, I, I don't know what else, what came the out last, that I think year. It was, I think it was one, the, the f- first Last of Us. Last yeah, of Us, yeah. Year, so. It's like... like no, it was or like GTA. Yeah. yeah, I think it was The Last of Us or something. Yeah. But, but um, how do you compare those two games when they're so radically different they're, they're equally, aiming for two different things so yeah. drastically oh, different than infinite? and so and I, and I guess it's that no. thing of just like yeah like a comedy will never win an oscar because it's like if you've got some if you've got like 12 years a slave uh, up against you know some <clears throat> very funny move that it, movie that is mr popper's penguin the game the game <laughs> of, that the game awards was awards on, are dumb is what i'm saying yeah. the game awards <laughs> was on in 2015 yeah rocket league up against and to your point here, how do you compare a game like Rocket League, a perfect game, to The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt? So, yes. Totally, yeah, like, that's totally it. To and be it, fair, and when I, think, I killed a harpy... Yeah. No problem. No problem. <laughs> um, and I do think that's true in that, like, if you look at films, films are all... There's, there's different kinds of films mm. and there's different levels of execution of it, but they're all the same thing but a version of that thing. Yeah. Whereas Rocket League and The Witcher are almost like comparing, like, what what won best activity this year? Sport or a fantasy book? Like, yeah. that's what, like, it's yeah. like you're comparing totally. almost two different genres. Because even genres animation of- again, next to uh, Moonlight, mm. they're, they're telling, they're, they're using the same medium that is limited to storytelling. Mm. There are tricks that you can use and you can tell the story in different ways, but... All they're doing is telling a story mm. unless they're on Netflix and it's a choose-your-own-adventure story. <laughs> uh, Dylan's 42 is right. He said they just watched the game club and got the nominees from there. There you I go. I think that's totally true. And, yep. yeah, I, th- I, I, I take your point to that. We, will, we look at games as being like... Because also we're going like, what's a game that we can talk about for an hour as well? Yeah. Like, what's something that's, that has like I a meaty story? That's our, that, that's our main factor. Like, we yeah, and, and so going into and that. And also is broadly interesting to our audience broadly interesting, well, yep. that they want to play it. And that, like you said, a lot of it is about when, because the marketing cycle has been there, we know what we're getting into with yeah. this, as opposed to like, I would never have sold you guys on Inscription as a game club game, even though I would argue it would make a great one because there's actually so much to dig yeah. into. Talk about, but yeah. before it came out, uh, there's no way you guys are going. Someone, yeah, some even I'm going game, yeah. a card game. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah, someone yeah. mentioned in chat, they were like, at the time, that for that month, Resi was a cultural event. Everyone was talking about it. It was on every podcast. It was mm-hmm. for good or for bad. It was just being, it was just be- going that around the That was the, the thing circuits. people wanted to talk about. And I think, obviously, Keely and the bunch coming up with these nominees as well, it's, it's the idea of going, well, th- yeah, we yeah. need to, we, we need these picks to have enough meat on each bone to, mm. to talk about, to have people want to discuss, want to watch this because they want to have these debates because there's, as I said, a lot of meat on each bone, but it's they're all different types of animals. <laughs> Good. There are also these, like, the criticism about Forza is dealing a little bit with recency bias. I do think it probably deserves to be on the list because it is a, from what I've played, pretty perfectly executed mm. version of a that racer. I mean, there's yeah. nothing actually like Forza Horizon in yeah. terms of a driving open world game. Mm. Uh, but... You know, will we be thinking Forza 5 was game of the year last year, six months from now? Probably not, this but we'll still be enjoying it. This is the fucking Hitman problem. Yeah. Mm. Hit, this happens with Hitman every time. Hitman 3 came out at the beginning of the year. Hitman 3 should be on that list. No one's thinking about Hitman 3. No, It Takes 2 came out at the beginning of the year and I'm still thinking about it. No one's thinking about Hitman 3. Uh, so then look at this list. It is public voted. Yeah. So. Okay. Not what do we think should win, but what do you think will win? It's because it's a popularity thing, right? Yeah. I, I think Deathloop, think the fact that it's a it's a PC and PlayStation exclusive potentially harms it. it from yeah. Metro Dread yeah. Switch. Yep. Rules that out. Uh, I, I actually, think it takes two. It takes I'd two love, Resident Evil takes, Village, I reckon. I'd <laughs> love <laughs> yeah. yeah. You think Ratchet and Clank is too young? No, I just uh, this is my thing, right? If Ratchet was there and It Takes Two was wasn't there. Everyone was so excited about it when it came out. They're like, it looks so amazing. And Psychonauts 2 wasn't there. I would be like, <clears throat> and there were two other games there. I would go, oh, I'm probably leaning more towards Ratchet because I, I have loved platformers this year. I've loved them. But It Takes Two being there is like, well, you've instantly discounted. I think it's better than Ratchet and Clank. So Ratchet and Clank will Just never get a look in for me. Yeah, yeah. Agree, yeah. Agree. Uh, ch- chat's pointing out that the way that the structure works in the Game Awards is that uh, the panel of critics that are on the Game Awards have waited to 90% of the vote, I think. Oh, and then, so it's just 10% and then audience of the vote. Is, yeah, 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 right. I remember that now. That's how it works. I think it should go to the game about the really messed up couple and their really troubled kid. That game is called? 
Well, you could be Resident Evil or it takes two. I guess that kid wasn't that really stuff because it good. was good. Oh, no, I thought I thought, jars I thought that's different true. parts of the world. I thought you were okay. building up for a draw. I knew twelve. I knew twelve minutes was in there at some point. But oh god! Yeah. <laughs> no, I was not even thinking no, about twelve okay, minutes. Good. That is thinking time. about twelve minutes. Oh no! Yeah, no! No! no, no all no. I was thinking about. Oh god! Messed up couple. Can't, yeah. Yeah. Okay. No. No. Bad. bad. Spoiler alert. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, we uh, put incest in the vault. It can't come out. Exactly. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you hear that incest? It's in game jail. Can't come out. Uh, so um, <laughs> that that does transition nicely because I did see a lot of people talking in chat like, "Hey, what's the po- uh, pocket game of the year stuff?" Oh, you'll find out. We've got plans for that. Don't you worry. You remember last year? We did Game of the Year. We'll do Game of the Year this year again. We have plans to and have plans. We have plans. To have, like, <laughs> that's why I didn't firm <laughs> yeah, anything yeah, yeah. We up. might, yeah. but like, Those we'll plans. do it. We have, have the plans. Yeah. We will do something. We'll do something. Yeah. And presents. Because oh, I've yeah, been pre- saving up a box of free shit to give away. Oh, exactly. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, Nick just went, oh, postage. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's <laughs> already <laughs> nice. He went, oh, oh like, nothing is God, free. Fucking hell. Nothing. Play that back. That slow down so that annoying. moment. And look Presents at Presents for everyone. Oh, I'm so glad you saw that. I died inside. <laughs> you totally it. did. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it took so long. I'm so sorry to everyone who took. Oh, and I still owe Game Multifish, Club mugs Multifish and stuff said I still need my art. Oh no! He got th- they sent. got thrown out. No, it was oh, wait, the art that got is yours. Yeah, I sent yeah, my art. I, yeah, we sent Steph's one. I sent that, mine. That must. And I owe game club that. mugs and books to people. Damn. Postage is a nightmare. Postage is anyway, nightmare. we'll figure it out. Um, this does this doesn't segue at all. But let's move on to our next segment. A little something we like to call back chat. Hmm? <laughs> 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 I don't believe they are. Back chat. Presented by Jep. It's a Jep thing. Mm-hmm. It's a Jep thing. Did you hear about a Jep? Well, Did he? Little Jep butts. Oh. They, they were all chatting about Jep. They're all just chatting about it's just cheeks. That's what this segment chatting is about. Jep. We just talk about Jep in a sauna. Did Jep yep. agree to be represented by butts? No one uh, gets a choice. He, uh, he didn't you, say no. I mean, the Patreon has some a lot of fine print. Yeah, uh, it really yep. and the chat is helping out by. Sex. There it is. There yeah, it is. Sexy it's... Jep butts. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like. Okay, this is uh, for as long as Jep's patronage continues. Uh, I'm going to propose that those are pockety butts. Those are jet butts. So that emote is a jet butt. Everything you're seeing there. Yep, that's, that's just jets. That's a, naked ass. That's a tight butt from near Tassie. I Correct. believe it. <clears throat> from near Tassie. Uh, back chat is a new segment on the show, which really doesn't. It's not a special segment. It's Talk just back. a chatting segment. But we thought let's name it and. Uh, I'm glad that we did because now we have that beautiful thing. Thank you very much, Will, for that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> today's back chat topic which we would also like your input on. So if you have an opinion on this, then jump into the on hold channel on Discord. Get your little button there. Get your button there. And we'll drag some of you up and start talking to it. And some of you might even be there now before you even know what we're talking about. Um, (laughs) The topic is that uh, last week, it was the one year anniversary of the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. My God. Slash S. Which was a week before. Which was a week Almost before, exactly a week. Yeah. yeah. Um, So uh, I thought it would be interesting to talk about uh, how do we feel about these consoles a year on? What's good? What's bad? What's working? What isn't? What did we think would be great and isn't? What did we think would be shit but is great? Which one's winning? What do we think? Can you buy them? <laughs> Can you buy them right now? I know. Every now still- and again, I see nah. press start is yeah. like, uh, JB Hi-Fi is taking offers of interest. And they're gone. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say that one as well. We have limited stock. They're gone. <laughs> uh, a little bit like that. Yeah, which is, again, we should say that sucks. There's people out there who still haven't played with either of these things. I think, fortunately, we've all played on both. And yep. I will kick things off Play. by saying um, I still love the idea of my PS5 and <laughs> the, like, I... L- <laughs> okay, it sits there as the special console for the game that'll roll it's around. That's so true. As yeah. the, like, One it's day. time to play on the PS5. <laughs> yeah. As expected, my it's Xbox... It's the fancy China. It is. Yeah. It's the fancy China you get out with the controller that... Ru- I fucking love the controller. I love the haptic feedback. I, I haven't really experienced anything with it recently, but I still love it. The honeymoon period for that has not gone away. Vibrations always work for me. I have found that the Xbox, however, <laughs> has just turned into a you, like totally just this one black box was removed for another um, I probably play more Xbox I use it as just my standard for multiplayer with my mates I don't I, I mean Forza is the first thing I'm trying to think of that it's just been like my 
I have to have this this console for this game. Mm. I can't think if there's been an Xbox Halo? exclusive. Uh, yeah, sorry, and Halo of this week, but like yeah, the previous that. fifty whatever weeks, like I can't think of what's been an Xbox One. Uh, Age of Empires. That's on uh, PC. Uh, oh, that's a PC. Well, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. There's no. I mean, is there? Xbox is a platform now, not a console. Yes. Is there something that's on Xbox consoles that isn't on the Xbox app? I don't no. think there is. No, no, there isn't. So, But they knew that going in. Totally. Of course, of course. I'm just saying, so in, in that sense, in my uh, how I feel about it, it has just turned into the black box under my TV where just I, I check on Game Pass and play my go-to CODs and stuff with my friends. My PS5, I have not switched over to that for a while, but I loved my Returnal. I love my Ratchet & Clank. I love my... Uh, uh, Resi was not an exclusive. Um... And maybe mm. my death loop. Yeah. Uh, like those were the little special times that I was like, it's, and then it goes back. Special times. It goes back behind the TV and just sticks out underneath my TV because it's, <clears throat> I can't fit it anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I'm, I'm more excited for the next PS5 game than I am about the exclusive for the Xbox because it is a special gaming. What about your, <laughs> yeah. what about your, yeah. I mean, cause the, uh, because PlayStation launched very strong because they also had, like, Sackboy. Uh, they had uh, uh, Astro's Playroom, Demon Souls. That's um, my biggest, uh, like, pile of shame. My current-gen pile of shame is Demon Souls. I was hanging out for that. That's why I got the PS5, and I put that down. Destruction and- All-Stars? Yeah, that was a fun little... Yeah, bump around trials. Yep. Yeah, I got into that. I was ready to be an esports champ, but that no one else was. So <laughs> couldn't find a game. Uh, Top of every server of yeah. one. <laughs> what are you? Uh, what are you playing console wise? Um, I haven't played either console very much um, at all since I got it. But I think that's. Um, I mean, obviously, there haven't been a lot of exclusives for them, but. I think it's more just due to my lifestyle having changed and because of lockdown and stuff, I've just been playing so much more online multiplayer things Mm -hmm. because I'm streaming so much more. It's easier for me to play on PC. I tend to choose that over console. Your PS5 died too, didn't it? No. It it just had like a bunch of firmware bugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also... Yeah, and I think I, I blamed a lot of that stuff um, on Cyberpunk, but I think it was just... It was actually, <laughs> oh, it was actually right. a console, it was actually yeah. A console. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, interesting. Um, but uh, I would say I probably played my PS5 more just because it was like Returnal I played on that. Um, I played Resi Evil and I played um, uh, Ratchet and Clank on that yeah. as well. Yeah. So I feel like it's... I f- I've, when I close my eyes, I see the PS5 more vividly in my mind, whereas the Xbox, I've kind of forgotten what it looks like. It's a little blurry. Yeah, you know? right. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's hard because I feel like I used to be such a console gamer because I played big open world RPGs and I liked being on the couch. Yeah. Like that was my yeah. that was my home base. You have really shifted over to be a PC game. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And I think that's just, it's just a practicality thing because of streaming and because I play so much more online stuff um, and multiplayer stuff. But yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know that either console is winning necessarily. It's just that, like, it's been a weird time. I, I like the yeah. idea of rating yeah. by <laughs> where are these things currently in our houses? Because, yeah. Nick, I want to, like, throw it to you of, like, where in your new setup are each of these consoles? So the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series S are downstairs at my computer. Mm-hmm. And the Xbox Series X is upstairs on my biggest nice main TV. TV. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. Uh, the I think that uh, I, I, it's hard to extrapolate. It's hard to uh, split Game Pass from the Xbox as yeah. well because I think that I think that Xbox like Xbox has is not my go to console. My go to console is the PlayStation. Like it, yours is the Xbox. Mm-hmm. Like anytime we're requesting codes, you're like, can I get an Xbox One? I used to be like that too. Yeah, and I I, I prefer the Xbox controller now. I think yeah. I probably wouldn't care. And I, I prefer the PlayStation 5 controller. I still love the haptic feedback stuff. Good man. I, like, I think the adaptive triggers are a fun thing when used correctly. Bug snacks, a perfect example of like the camera shutter on that was just like, I never got bored of doing that. Mm. Uh, I think that that's, that stuff is really fun. I don't think that there has been enough games that have really taken advantage of it because there just haven't been enough exclusives who feel like it's worth spending the time mm. and money put into that. Um, uh, I was more. Ex- I think I was more excited for the PlayStation because I do really love the. I think you're right. The PlayStation represents like a special game is coming, mm. and I think it's still like that. Is still that. I mean, a special game 
It's going to be a third person action (laughs) adventure (laughs) cinematic whatever. And it's probably going to be on PC now eventually. So that's kind of fallen away. That's something that in the back of my mind on Xbox was always kind of like, and there's a PC version. I can literally be playing Halo Infinite uh, multiplayer now on PC. And it's like, so I I last night bounced between both and it stopped the console feeling like a console and felt like an extension of my PC. Mm. So yeah, to your point of, that was originally my point, uh, that the PlayStation 5 has this version. Now it's my point. Point. <laughs> mine again point. is like it's it's time to play that first yeah. pra- party. Mm. Whereas like game. I was getting like FIFA, I was getting PlayStation. I like, yeah, right. like games where I could have a choice. I was generally getting PlayStation. Mm. I've moved away from that over the last couple of months, and I'm just going everything PC. And I don't know what that kind of shift was, but it was. I think the idea was like sometimes I would like to take something up to the TV. That's why I was getting on console, and now I'm like, oh, my downstairs is so set up perfectly that yeah, I never need to yeah. do anything up there. Yeah. Um, and the last thing I would say on that is that. I was really excited for a lot of the software stuff in the PlayStation and I feel like it still hasn't realized its potential or it just never will. Mm, you mean of- like all the like service stuff? Like yeah, like the card. Clip sharing, highlighting, how to solve problems. Yeah, that, that sort stuff. of stuff. Yeah, totally. Like the little walkthrough things that jump into this specific part of That's the game. Nice. Yeah. And I think that yeah. this was something that um, you, I think you brought up when they announced this stuff was the idea of going, it's cool. Is it worth... Uh, Ubisoft putting extra effort into just this console port of the thing yeah. or these extra features. It's it's mm. only worth it when it's a uh, PlayStation Exclusive. first party yep. and we just have not seen a lot of those. Uh, so, yeah. therefore, it's not really getting a run. Mm. Yeah, Pretty good third-party support, though, for the adaptive triggers and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that was they something we, was, we were equally yeah. sceptical when we were talking about it before it even dropped. We're like, this was great. You guys came back from the Astros playthrough being like, it's phenomenal as a piece of new tech. Mm. But we were all super sceptical of like, is this going to be a thing that every third party is going to be like, we don't care. We're not putting that in. Mm. Uh, and it has, I feel like, been maybe it's never it's never as dramatic as when you're playing Spider-Man, Miles Morales, and it's like oh, oh yeah, it's yeah. just it's an that, extra little click that or killed something. them for me. I just like yeah, my you finger never is still liked sore. It. It's awful. <laughs> I think it's I think it's absolutely awful. Really? Yeah, I hate it oh, so funny. much. But like I don't like the resistance idea is so like against the mindset that I have about what a controller oh, yeah. should be. Like uh, the. I get what I get what it no, is. No, yeah, and I you, totally a, see the value. Like in it. a controller is supposed to melt in your hands, and you forget that you yeah. have it, and it's an extension of yourself as opposed to a toy. Yeah, there's right. like, there's no way you jump in. Like, there's no way I would use it in Call of Duty. Like that would you if I turn it off. if I cared. Yeah, totally, and yeah. I do. Yeah, so I, it's not a problem. Yeah. It's totally not a problem. I think it's but, just about finding the right balance, though, because I always like that stuff. And do you remember even like I think it was. Um, Maybe it was The Last of Us or whatever when your t- torch would flicker and then you had to like bang it against the palm of your oh, hand. That one, yeah. Yeah. To, to, to <laughs> yeah. I love yeah. that. Do you remember Death Stranding That's when the baby was crying? So you'd bang it against <laughs> it. <laughs> um, but Don't yeah, no, I think it's, it's nice and I, I like it when you can kind of feel a ripple from one side of the Yeah, I think the vibrations are But I think to your point, Pete, yeah, it's that like... But yeah, you, when, it's, it's, when, you're, when your hand is getting sore because you're pushing against so much resistance, I mean, that's not fun. Well, it was yeah, you know, like... Or just well, don't remind me of... Woe is me, but like... You know, it was like swinging through the city was like really satisfying. And yeah. the first time you do it and you feel that feels cool. Yeah. Like it, they, you know, it was designed well, mm. but it was just, it became a, th- a thing that I was aware of that I totally did not want to be aware of. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so that was the thing that frustrated me about it. And, and it's why I just, I just flick it off, which mm. you can do in most games. You couldn't, you, I did it in Ratchet and Clank, but you couldn't turn it off in... The it would turn back on in the little mode where you were the bug guy running around. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. and you That's just couldn't right. turn it off in that. And I was like, hmm. and that vibrated <laughs> like crazy. It was from memory. Insane. Yeah. So like you are you're always going PC as much as possible. Yeah. But if you had to pick one of these consoles for the benefit of this segment, right now with my PC, I would probably take the PlayStation. Because yeah. Xbox exists across both. Yeah. If I didn't have my PC, I would have an Xbox for sure. Yeah. But I think we knew that going. We like an Xbox at this point is for people who don't have a PC. Surely. I think that's the I, th- I think that's part of their play. It's it's an accessible way. I think both the consoles are amazing. Yeah. Like the hardware in them is so incredible, mm. particularly when we're in this chip shortage, which of course is making it hard for people to get the consoles. But it's making video cards. High-end video cards are two to three times more expensive than a console mm. yeah. that is doing 
as like Tyler, as good a job as, like yeah. ray tracing frames. and uh, everything like yeah 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 you know you're playing 4k 60 frames on a 750 dollar piece of kit that's insane yeah. yeah that is so we haven't i don't think we've ever had consoles that have been this powerful compared to because those hardware. GPUs are getting up, they, they start at like eight ninety or something. Like, sorry, eight hundred. Like, to couple. I think of you the can height. get. I think you can get like a three sixty Ti for twelve hundred dollars or something. Jesus. Okay. Right. Yeah. Wow. And like, that's not doing as much as your Xbox or PlayStation. Oh, yeah. God no. And so, also, the Xbox and PlayStation are still being because of the chip shortage, which has meant that they're able to sell less of them. Their support for the PlayStation Four has extended. So like, yeah. Horizon is not really going to be taxing the PlayStation 5 in the way that it could be if they weren't mm -hmm. also aware that, shit, we need to make sure that this works on PlayStation 4 as well. Yeah. Same with God of War. Like, all these games are not actually still pushing that point because they're like, this generation bleed is huge yeah. this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's massive. And yeah, and so PlayStation has the things that I can't play on my PC right now. But if I didn't have a PC, I just think Game Pass is the best thing in video games right now. Like, there's so much stuff. Like, you pay that that little fee and then you you can play destiny on like h super high end yeah. gear mm. you can play halo now i you check it like Fonzie. netflix as well i There's jump on, like, uh, on it. Yeah. and like yeah. i think it's been over the last six months particularly i think the first six months of this year game pass was i was like this is cool but i've played it all yeah like it's all it's like you're adding a back catalog whereas the last six months it has been Basically, once a month, there's been one or two games coming to it. I'm like, oh no, this like, is it like takes two just dropped on. Crazy. I've had a few instances yeah. this yeah. year where I've been given extra codes from publishers, and I'm like, I'll give them out to, to people. And I'm like, who wants a code for this? And they're like, it's on Game Pass. I already have it. Yeah. I'm like, what about? And they're like, it's on Game Pass too. And I'm like, totally. All right then, Jesus. <laughs> like, <laughs> it is. And the, the quality of them, and it's be, and you know, like, it's only going to get more insane because all the studios that Microsoft have acquired are about to start putting out what they've paid them for but it, it, it i think it, i think that if if you separate it i think if you took game pass out of the xbox it there's no, for me there's nothing really there mm, like yeah. uh, at least the, the playstation will play all the games that the xbox does and the big playstation exclusives that are like marquee titles but once you put game pass in there it's like jesus and i do think you're right like if i didn't have a great pc i would probably just get a series x and be like okay this yeah. if i had to get one this is it like yeah. this is the one even though i barely play it because i have the pc yeah 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 yeah, yeah like, it's so, we're very fortunate to i was about to say as well we're in a very privileged yeah. position that we've all managed to get our hands on both of them and that we have that uh point of view that we can compare and contrast and 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 be very picky but and also, choosy about it if you haven't been able to get your hands on one then that's okay too because there's not heaps of stuff for them at the moment Yes, yeah, yeah, that's the other. Totally. It is like you could you could go without because they have extended that. the PS5 in particular. As much as it, it's become the nice China because we're not having guests around very often. Yeah, that's yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, like yeah, yeah. where that sits. I, I, like, I do I do miss like console hype. I hope I hope next year we just get a bunch of really cool stuff. Horizon like Horizon mm -hmm. Forbidden West. I definitely want to play that on console. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Well, you, you'll have to unless you wait six months or something, afterwards. Right? Like it is, oh, it is, yeah, it, oh, it, is okay. it is a staggered thing. They yeah, are still. Cool. Well, um, <clears throat> well, people who do have these consoles, I assume, because they're waiting on hold, or they're uh, furious wanna, they don't, and that's they're what they want to chat back about. I do think it's only fair that we drag in uh, Jep. It is his segment after all. It's his butt. Uh, Pete, do you want me to do it? Yeah, if you, yeah, yeah, I, yeah here. Good, I'm going to drag you in uh, and uh, make sure to mute the Twitch stream, Jep. And you are on the air. How are you, buddy? Hey. 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 How, how, how'd you like the butts? Um, I didn't read the Patreon fine print. Mm -hmm. mm, no one ever does. 100% okay with it. That's how we get Signed away with your it. life away. <laughs> yeah. uh, the fine print about the butt stuff is actually written in the crack of the pockety butt. So that's the, okay. um, yeah, that's where we hide the butt stuff. That's how they get you. I'll, uh, I'll have to look in, look in closer. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to spread it. Spread the uh, oh. So your opinion on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X one year in, how are you feeling? What are you playing? What do you think? Okay. Um, so I was lucky enough to walk into EB Games and just ask if they had any consoles, any PS5s, and they just happened to have a digital edition cool. in stock. Oh, were you, the one you want. Were oh you waiting God. to get laughed at a little? You're like, oh, I know this is a silly question, but you wouldn't I, have one that back. <laughs> Basically, yeah. I'd heard that people had luck just walking into stores. Mm -hmm. but That's amazing. I didn't expect to. Have you used it um, since? <laughs> <laughs> a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> um, I played Ratchet & Clank when it was the... 
um, game club game. Mm-hmm. Um, Astro's Playroom was really good yeah. for showing off the controller in particular. Big fan of the controller. You like the haptic feedback? I actually. <laughs> um, PS5 was my first PlayStation. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, cool. Yeah, basically right. only played um, on PC before that. Oh, so that actually and means that you have tons of PlayStation games that you can play <gasps> that you've never played before. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I, one of the first games I played was The Last of Us. Oh, I didn't play that. God. That's yeah, that must cool. be a wonderful. Really yeah. good. Oh, really you, good. <laughs> you can play through the whole Uncharted series. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's been remastered and everything. It's really good. Have you heard of a little indie developer called Hideo Kojima? <laughs> <laughs> Death Stranding. Oh, no. Oh, no. How do you feel about having a baby strapped to the front of you in water <laughs> while you carry a bunch of boxes on your back? <laughs> um, well, as Gus demonstrated, you just like whack the baby. Dad, just whack the baby. Just whack it. Just whack it. Just whack the baby. Just whack it. So uh, are you, I, I would say, are you satisfied with your PlayStation 5 purchase uh, early on? I think so, mainly because I had that back catalog to play. Because mm-hmm. um, yeah. I just, I mean, there's a lot to play on PC, especially now that PlayStation games are coming to PC anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have a Switch for, you know, playing Doom. Good man. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> Bravo, oh, sir. Bravo. Well played. Well played. Uh, all right. Well, thank you very much, buddy. Uh, thank you for your uh, support of the show. Thank you for your support of PlayStation. No That's worries. Um, <laughs> thank all you right. for buying a Jep. Um, <laughs> yep, no worries. It's Jep thing. Uh, thanks for all the butts. I guess. No worries. That was... So long and thanks for all the butts. <laughs> <laughs> that was Jep, butt stuff, whatever his last name is. Cheers, mate. Um, <laughs> thank you very much, Jep, uh, bringing in someone else now. Who do I see? Who do I see? From Team Xbox. Do you want to pick someone? <laughs> yeah. got these names. We're going to have the, uh, we're gonna have the console wars by fighting... <laughs> Laughing Seal, you are coming in. You're coming in hot. Unmute your microphone, Laughing Seal. Mute your Twitch stream. Tell Laughing us. Seal, you Xbox? are on air. And you are still muted. Can I unmute you? No. You can't. No. You don't have that power. I don't have no, that power. We should have put up a s- power. I was going to say a scoreboard for each person who like. Oh, oh sorry. Hey. hey. I think I fixed it. Sorry you did. That. Did you certainly did? Welcome, I Laughing Seal. I muted myself before because I had the stream going on my laptop before. There you go. Ah. You're fine. Oh, thank you. You're fine. You're on. You're on. Uh, uh, welcome, uh, Xbox, PlayStation. Perfect. What did you buy? Did you get either of them? Did you mute so yourself again? My dad was generous <laughs> enough to share the use of his PS5. Hey. Um, cool. Sorry, no, this is a delay because I can't hear you guys through Discord, so I'm going by the stream. Oh, really? I don't know why. Ah, but so it's like I, an old-fashioned international call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're going to tell, tell us a tale that goes for 40 <laughs> seconds and we won't talk. We'll yeah. listen. Go. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry about that. So, yeah, so my dad has been generous enough to allow the use of his PS5. Um, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, no, so I've been really enjoying his his PS5. Um, I have played... Fuck, <laughs> every time he goes live. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, um, I've been really enjoying uh, Astro's Playroom, Bug Snacks. Um, my, my experience with Guardians of the Galaxy has been very mixed. Um, I, I've gone at length about that in Discord, so I won't go on about it for too long. Um, but yeah, no, I really enjoyed Astro's Playroom, um, but it was a tech demo, so eh. Um, Bugsnax, I've been absolutely loving, though. Um, I got that recently, and it, it's, it's such a cute and wonderful game. It's like if Muppets went into psychological horror, That's and right. it's great. <laughs> it's That's just, right. um... <laughs> But the thing that worries me about the PS5 itself is that whilst the games are great um, and the controller is great, it feels very gimmicky to me personally so far. I like the the triggers and the adaptive triggers, and I, I haven't had that issue with my fingers get sore. Um, and I like the vibrations, but I feel like the vibrations aren't used that much as much as it could. Uh, um, sorry. So I'm just waiting for something to do a little bit more with it. And then some of the games I've been playing haven't really done a lot with the loading speed. I feel like, mm. um, like Bugs Next just has loading screens like at every other oh. point, which is really annoying. Um, whereas Astro's Playroom was just smooth all the way through, and I'm waiting for another game to be like that. That um, is such a good point we that we have that. not spoken about. The whole Lo- like end of the loading screen in yeah. all console games, and I feel like 
I think I feel like devs have just gotten better at hiding them. Like Forza is full of moments where it's like you're standing on a stage waving, and I'm like, yeah. Did this have to be here? Or is this <laughs> loading back there, aren't something you? Something right now. There yeah. are loading screens. But, but I feel like snacks. covering covering loading is an art form, and some developers are better at it than others. But we were we were literally the console was marketed as like Nick said, like Spider-Man. loading. It was like loading can, is gone. Spider Man has no loading, and then every game from here will be that. And I totally agree with Laughing Seal. It's like mm. it's that was something that we were expecting, and similar with the controller as well. Like it's like every game is going to do this ratchet it up and it's like oh no it was a couple of titles and now loading's back yeah uh lucas horatio demon souls two second reload yeah that was yeah, yeah that was demon actually. souls was like the, uh, yeah a, yeah, a uh, launch to show it off and go this yeah. is what we're gonna be like from mm-hmm. now on so all right well thank you laughing seal i think yeah that was uh we totally forgot about that so thank you very much for bringing that up and also mm-hmm. i will just say uh mito in the chat said i'm super impressed by laughing seal's ability to talk over himself from 10 seconds ago <laughs> <laughs> it's totally true and it is a wild skill so congratulations <laughs> i will tell you one, I, one time when i was doing the opl um the league of legends uh australian esports stuff we did a stadium event and i was interviewing people in the crowd during a break and their voice was playing back to them from the from the massive like screen in the stadium (laughs) half a second after they would talk and i started talking to this drunk guy (laughs) and he he started answering and then he started hearing his voice come back and i watched you know that scene in the original x-men where the guy turns into water on the table (laughs) that was him he just like (laughs) fell apart as a human being in front of me like so confused Fused what's going on, <laughs> and because he was drunk and probably a little high, he was just being so inundated with himself that he collapsed <laughs> and literally dropped to his knees on the gr- in the middle of the interview. <laughs> so you, sir, are better than that drunk stoned guy from MEO two years. Unless ago. you're currently on your knees having a panic <laughs> attack. In which but case, either way, yeah, thanks for calling. Like like uh, thank you very much, Laughing Seal. Uh, <laughs> and I think we got oh, we got time for one more. We got time for one yeah. more. Okay. Let's back chat um, one more time. I don't know who this is. So, uh, in fact, hang on. I'm going to ditch Laughing Seal. Uh, and Ranico. Ranico? Ranico. Ranico? I don't know what it is, but you're on air. Hello? Ranico. It's probably a delay. Hello? Ranico. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> One more time. Marco. <laughs> Ranico. Hold on. Ranico. Ranico. Good. Hi. How are you? Hey. Good. I should probably be working since it's 11 a.m. where I am. Ah, but, uh, where are you? I'm in Sweden. And no delay. Oh, what? Amazing. Lord. Your prisons are amazing. <laughs> and I would just like to say <laughs> good morning in Swedish, but I can't. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, you... Wait, Steph did it. Say that again. Good morning. Yeah, good moron. It, uh, call me a yeah. moron. <laughs> you could, I'm a yes, what? Yes, it does Sorry. very much sound like moron. <laughs> uh, before we get to the console stuff, were you were you born there? Uh, you expat? No, you no, moved there? I, I'm Australian. I moved to Sweden about uh, seven years ago now. Um, uh, were you chasing a relationship? Were you chasing work? Well, you chasing my, my partner got a job at a university here. Uh-huh. So I moved... Because she was moving. <laughs> this, this is. She's also Australian. This is silly, but my friend moved to Sweden as a teacher. Do you know my friend Rupert? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I don't want to try. I have one I'm friend sorry, who moved there. The kid <laughs> says the only thing that's relevant right now, which is Gus Moron. <laughs> 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 Thought oh, I'd try. Man, I'm, so, I'm so jealous. I was uh, I had a, a trip booked to to Sweden um, before COVID hit, and so I'm glad I never got to yeah. So sorry, uh, uh, Renico, you don't know Rupert <laughs> out of 10.35 million people who live in Sweden. But how many Aussies are over 2020? there? It's true. There could be a place yeah, where they all I, hang I out. I do not. No, There's gonna be like I'm, nine I'm Australians also, over there. Okay. Well, that, I'm also. Uh, it, in the south end of Sweden, so I'm not near. I, I assume a lot of people that moved to Sweden have probably moved to Stockholm. Stockholm, yep, yep. Is that where Rupert lives? Yeah. He's had that syndrome for a while. Bad joke. Well, uh, okay, so uh, it's uh, like a six, seven hour drive away. <laughs> so and, and you never visit him. This is just well. Next next <laughs> time you're in Stockholm, say hi to Rupert for us, please. Do. Um, so Xbox or PlayStation? What has won your heart this year? And also, what's filling uh, the shelves in Sweden? Yeah. So, uh, you can't get either of them here, uh, 
one of my friends got his hands on an Xbox Series X, and he's been using it a lot, which has uh, spoiled uh, our ability to play Halo co-op, because that requires you to both be on the same console, platform. if you want to, or both be on PC. So my mm -hmm. kind of playing with that has actually been via xCloud, because then... I can still be on my computer, oh, but clever. effectively be on console. Do you have good internet that can handle xCloud? I have, uh, yeah, I've got good internet that can handle xCloud. My home network sometimes lets me down because wow. uh, I'm unfortunately relying on Powerline to get the ah, uh, right. internet up to the study. So sometimes you, you get some very noticeable delay from that, but mostly, like, it's worked surprisingly well. I just have had to get used to the fact that I'm suddenly rubbish at shooting things. Because <laughs> that is the, that's the other thing, I mean, along with yeah. Game Pass, it's like xCloud is turning the phone into the th fourth console, I guess, mm. uh, if you can yeah, switch. Yeah, so, iPad. Yeah, totally. Like, old laptop. Old laptop, whatever. old crappy laptop. Yeah. Um, so, you've been, uh, you've been mainly in the Game Pass ecosystem, I guess, over the last 12 months. Yeah, yeah, and, like, um, as someone who uh, has a small child running around, like it, yours, the, the fact that I can just have yes, mine, <laughs> uh, it's uh, really convenient to just be like, I just have this monthly fee. Uh, it, it gives me access to all the games, and uh, I can play with friends. I, I don't need to worry about a particular device. So yeah, sure. Yeah, nice. Well, I uh, congratulations on uh, living in Sweden because I hear it's great. Uh, congratulations on having good enough internet to run xCloud most of the time, which is great. And congratulations on the child. I feel like he has it made. This sounds like a pretty good life. Mm -hmm. Good life. Yeah. If you see Rupert. If you see Rupert, say hi. <laughs> Please do. Send him my best. Yeah. <laughs> Send him my best. <laughs> All right. Thanks for calling in, man. What's goodbye nice. in Swedish? Pavel. Gus Moran. I Danish. I only know Danish. Gus idiot. Tusen tak. Bye. Is he gone? He's gone. Okay, good. He left. Good. Uh, all right. Good. <laughs> well, we've got the answer. Did no, we get we, a, no, no, that's not the, what we're the answer about. is. No the answer, answer. is there's, there's no there's no winner. There's no you can't win. I mean, there's not enough stuff to win right now. A lot of consoles are like. I guess you get rid of your old console most of the time when you get a new one. So it, you. you I, I guess I'm just. I, I guess I'm going on the idea of like, from an exclusive perspective, mm. it, it's just like it's still this waiting game. I, it's like yeah, in I've, three I, years time, I'll have the answer as to like which one of these look platforms back. I ended up gravitating more towards. Yeah. But holy shit, Game Pass is just like becoming. Yeah, at the moment, it's it's not exciting to talk about consoles when there isn't much happening for them. But also, part of me is just like, I know that their time will come. Their time will come. And also, as we said, like to not really have the the war of exclusives, it comes down to. So, do you like? Your fingers being sore-ish on like the one fingers. gimmicky thing. Yeah. That's a, that's How kind of what we. your hands to vibrate? A year later, that is still <laughs> the thing we are using as the point of difference between the two of them. Which is well, crazy. Yeah, I, I think, and I think we're twelve months away from really seeing. I think the worst part about what we're going to see with this console generation, which is the like exclusive draw uh, on both sides. Mm. Uh, yeah. God of War Two Horizon for PlayStation next year, everything Bethesda, Starfield uh, for Xbox. Xbox. Yep. Whatever so, Naughty Dog does next. Whatever Naughty Dog is working on, for sure. So it, it's like... Don't that's forget the, Forspoken. <laughs> I wish we could. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so what you're saying is back chat, first, first segment, not great. 12 months later, the next time we come back to back chat, yeah, yeah. it's going to be a scorcher. Back yeah. going to be amazing. Be hot. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, like, I think Xbox titles being on PC makes them far more accessible and, and seeing PlayStation release their first party games on PC as well is a, an awesome thing. The window hopefully will shrink on the exclusivity for the platform. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it's in... PlayStation's best interest, but they do sell a lot of copies of their games on Steam, so they obviously see the incentive mm. to do it, and um, and then everyone can play the freaking games, and it's not about console wars anymore. I do, I do really, I would love. I'm sure they're thinking of something. I would love to see what PlayStation's response to all of Microsoft's super aggressive moves are, because I agree. I think that the ultimate world is that consoles are just a cheaper PC. Yeah. Um, and that you go, you can play everything everywhere and it's just about like 
what is the best like do you want the thing where you just plug it into your tv and it costs you 700 bucks and you don't need to deal with like uh firmware changes to your graphics card and drivers and all that sort of stuff and it'll just work or do you want the super customizable thing on widescreen monitor ultra wide monitors and blah 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 and the, if that can be the choice and i think that that's the world that microsoft want to envisage and it's just whether or not Expo and it's whether or not playstation go Okay, we're going to compete in that world with you, or we we're going to sit over here really the console. go hard in the other direction yeah. and go. Actually, there's two consoles, or there's two platforms. There's PlayStation and there's everything else that are all kind of sharing stuff. Yeah. Then Nintendo's off making Doing the same things. fucking games, <laughs> every, putting out goddamn Pokemon's left, right. Oh, we should Pokemon tomorrow. Yeah, I know. I got a code coming for you tomorrow, baby. Oh, Don't you worry it. about that. You're you going to be, you're gonna be my shining thing. pearl. Oh, you look at your big Or are you going to be my brilliant diamond? I can't remember. I'm brilliant diamond. <laughs> you're going to be my brilliant diamond. All right. I thought <laughs> I'm, just, I'm still, still your shining like, pearl, aren't I? Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for back chat. Let's see that segment card one more time. It's a Jep thing. They're more chins. They are more chins. No, that's full on arms. I want to grab it. Yeah, it looks so good. I hate, I hate how ripe is how I would describe that ass. Shining pearl. And then you did the noise. I just put it together. <laughs> Give it to me. She's in the delay as well. Yeah. <laughs> She's in the delay. Well, it's the She's Swedish so delay. Yeah. It's yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah it's a, God, that's a tight fucking butt. Um, all right. Uh, speaking of tight butts, we're going to go to a quick break. We'll be back with the end of Back Pocket uh, and a fun little announcement right after this. That's not a segue. <laughs> Doc Ock with CGI. I wish I could get a CGI makeover. Make me look like I'm four again. <laughs> oh, jeez, something. Perfect. Shorts, their summer's pants. From cargoes to cutoffs, Bermuda to board shorts, when you want to show off the fourth worst part of the human body, wear Oranishi shorts. Every pair of Oranishis are single origin, fair trade, and handmade by this lonely, overworked child robot with hands. The process couldn't be simpler. We start by asking for your measurements. Then, in the spirit of fairness, we send you our measurements. Our robot will send you fabric samples of six kinds of thick denim, we then make a full pair of jeans. After sending you a picture of us wearing the jeans and look and fit, we surgically remove the excess pant and voila, you've got yourself a pair of original Oranishis. And to ensure there's no wastage and a dolphin doesn't choke on them or something, we take those discarded leg bits and use them in our latest product, Oranis sleeves. Oranis sleeves for when you accidentally bought a singlet. So don't settle for sweaty knee pits. Order your Oranishis today. They're the only shorts you'll ever or a need.
Welcome back, and a big thank you to It's Jep. Oh my goodness, we've been hearing about that sweet butt all night. Phoenix93 uh, and Oranishi for your support of Back Pocket. We love you. If you want to be loved by us, then head to patreon.com forward slash backpocket or backpocket.gg and become a member of the Patreon community. Unlock the Discord. Unlock the access to the phone calls, uh, the Discord calls coming in here. Unlock access to the so many other things. And... I mean, you've almost you almost dropped it too early. I because don't. you you don't need to be a patron to get access to the thing we're about to announce. You don't. But we might prioritize the patron. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, Gus no, no, is no. right. You don't need uh, you don't need to be a patron uh, to be a part of a segment next week, and hopefully an ongoing segment as well. Uh, but it's something that we need to prep this week. Uh, we wanted to get uh, you know you fine pocketeers involved in the show a little more, so we're launching a new segment called. Pocket Dial. Pocket Dial? What's Pocket Dial? Pocket Dial is a custom voicemail message service that we have set up. It is live already. We want you to call in uh, and just leave us a message. Should we read it? Wait, why is he holding a knife? Uh, th- that's th- Attention, Pocketeers. Need advice? Feeling guilty? Just want to get something off your chest? Then call Pocket Dial. Call anytime and leave your message in detail, anonymously, anonymously if you'd prefer, and it may be played live to the public on the show at a future date. Call Pocket Dial 028405. 7996. When you call, you will be alone with an answering machine. Uh, because this is the podcast. What? The b- oh, no. Uh, that's the, th- there is a poster that uh, I was made uh, aware of by Pete, which uh, was put out famously in the 80s called The Anonymous Line. That's a podcast. I, I'm yeah. sure well, it is, uh, but it's based off that poster. The, the podcast uh, is based off the poster? What the happened? Poster. <laughs> the, p- the poster is... I, ha- I don't know anything the about the podcast. The, way that the guy advertised the hotline. <laughs> yeah. And the podcast is based on the hotline. Want to be on a podcast? Yeah. Call this number. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, we, we want to uh, get your guys... Uh, Apology voice- line, that's what it's called. Yes. Apology line. Uh, we, we wanted to get you guys uh, involved. The Apology line. And it's based on a poster. <laughs> um, we want to get you guys involved in the show. And so, yeah, you could call up. You can ask for advice. You can tell us a story of something that happened to you. Um, you can... Confess uh, your sins. Yeah, confess your sins. Get something off your chest. Have one of those, like, late night thoughts where you're like, I just need to share this with something. Or, like, a brilliant idea that you've suddenly come up with. We want to hear it all. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, we'd ask you to keep it to under 30 seconds. We don't want these... In fact, we just won't play the big, wrong, long, rambling ones because it's going to eat up too much time and... It's it's never gonna. It's like it's like it's unless you're shit faced. <laughs> <laughs> well, also encourage drinking. No, yeah, well, because also the way that the voicemail the vo- the way the voicemail is set up is that once we hit the time limit, it won't accept any more that month. Correct. So we don't want people, people just hogging it. Are people going to be calling in to talk about a specific thing or whatever they want? Whatever they want. Whatever they want. This is literally a service we're providing. The idea being that we will uh, pick and choose some out of there and we might play them. If they're a question, we might talk about the answer and speculate. We might just have a, it might just be a cool, funny story, a joke. I feel like we'll need to like put that. a disclaimer at the front that like. It was there. It said you might, it might get played on the show. No, no, no. Like a disclaimer that's like we are not licensed therapists to offer any real life advice. Oh, that's, that's not about It's a venting line. It's a venting line. Okay. Yeah. Venting. And in fact, when you call, this is what you'll hear. Hi. You've called Pocket Dial. Leave your message after the beep. That's a really warm, inviting... <laughs> <laughs> we'll play that Steph, one next week. Steph went from being really concerned about the like how sensitive we should be about this to diving across a couch to make a turkey noise down the phone. <laughs> to make a total in joke noise. Yes, Fantastic. I love it. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, good. Um, and the way that it works is that it sends <laughs> it sends this. Uh, we could access. It. In fact, hang on. Let me access it now because uh, we've got. <laughs> You can get into the mailbox and get and get the uh, messages, but it also sends us an email with a link to the like MP3 of your recording. But also, it attempts to transcribe the recording, and it's pretty accurate if you speak clearly. Uh, and can I say I, I appreciate that you, the way you recorded that message was, I think we'll all say, a bit sexy phone sex line. But I think Which if is I was another podcast, is it? Yeah, I'm listening to that one. I've seen that poster. It's, yeah, the one about the like sex line in the states and the like, yeah, massive. 
disaster. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yep, wow. Yep, yep, yep. But point being is I was about to not criticize. I was about to be like, oh, my God, I can't believe you did a sexy voice down it. I think I would have got the record your message now. I would have done the exact same thing. I'd be like, hi, you've called. But like, it's just well, I did, what comes I did, naturally. I did quite a few versions. Of what I was going for was three things. One, sexy. Two, mm-hmm. a little creepy. Three, inviting. And it's hard to strike the balance between all three, but I think I nailed it. <laughs> I, I thought you might have possibly gone for the... Write po- this down, ladies and gentlemen. I thought you might have gone for the pockety as the voice and been like, Hal, I'm the pockety, the <laughs> yeah. well, I thought that would be too creepy. I, th- I did want people to be like... That's my sexy voice. ...laughing or something getting out of it. So, uh, I have the message here that was, that was sent to us. Um, I'll play it. Get transcribed? Yeah, and I'll read that out to you in a second. <laughs> so, here we go. This is it. <laughs> so what I said was it's really warm inviting and the transcription says it's really warm in butt. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Jeff thing. It's a Jeff thing. It's a Jeff thing. It's a Jeff thing. It's it's a Jeff Jeff thing. thing. <clears throat> oh, good. Um, so uh, there you go. If we can get that card up one more time, we'll put a post in the Discord for this. I recommend doing what, I'm, what I did and then just save it in your phone as, po- as uh, Pocket Dial. I've got it here mm-hmm. as Favorites. Pocket Dial. That's 02-8405-7996. And if you live in Sweden or America or anywhere else, then you just need to add the Plus country one. codes <laughs> to... If you need yep. to call, and if we see the card again, if you need to call and say how much trouble you're having slicing up tomatoes, that's fine too. That's fine. It's going to be a fucking disaster. What's about <laughs> we come back next week and we're like, hey guys, so <laughs> that segment's been cancelled. Please do not call the number again. We the have police have been notified. <laughs> <laughs> We've got our first message. Oh. The police have been notified. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I will say, uh, if, you, if you feel comfortable, leave your name. If you don't feel comfortable, that's fine. You don't need to leave your name. That's it's, totally fine. it's totally up to you. We put it up there as like the anonymous line, but you're totally welcome to put your name there if it's something as lovely as saying love you. Yeah. Uh, if it's not, you're also welcome to leave your name. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to take a swing, and I, I reckon that was NJ Games. Me too. I reckon that was NJ yeah. Games. Oh. I reckon it was. So tell me if I'm right or I'm wrong, but I reckon that's, that's what, what I'm that feeling. was. Uh, that's great. So this will be good. Uh, this you Steph, think we might get- a great start to the... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, to the line. I'm waiting for like, I'm not going to leave my name, but I think you guys are great and real cuties. I'll be like, yeah, <laughs> you, know you are. Give it away at we the know. end. <laughs> NJ says it wasn't me. Oh, oh, oh. fuck you for not calling. <laughs> uh, so that's Pocket Dial. It's going to be on the show next week. Uh, excited to see uh, what sort of things are just on your mind and we get to hear about. Um, okay, that is it for the show tonight. It was a good one. It was fun. It was a chatty one. We talked a lot. We did. We talked a lot. I mean, we got to keep talking. Too much. We, Maybe in the post show, we should not talk. Oh, we should do a half hour silent post show. Like that episode of Only Murders in the Building. <laughs> Haven't seen it. I don't know if I'm going to feel comfortable. Or with that this. episode of Buffy where the creepy things steal their voices. Oh, yeah. That's the one based on the poster. Um, so uh, head to patreon.com forward slash backpocket to become a member of the community. Head to pay, uh, backpocket.gg. That's where our merch is. Hush. That's where the links to our podcast are. Hush. That was a good episode. With a gentleman. Good episode. Creepy. <laughs> with the gen- mm, with the gentleman, mm, it's warm mm. in butt. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> <laughs> we can never tell them what it means. Um, uh, but a big thank you to everyone for watching tonight. It's been a blast. A massive thank you to our mods for keeping thing uh, keeping things relatively controlled tonight. That's Gat, Syntax, Era, Kit, Carnage, Liz, Dahlia, Sith, Cat, Phoenix, Lane, Disturbed, Seven, Seven, Eight, Jex, and Caboose, and What the Shark. <laughs> Good Lord, we love you. Thank you for all the hard work that you do constantly uh, putting up with this show that you decided to mod and now feel trapped. You feel trapped in You're the... Trapped job. before the big disaster episode next week where we get all the phone calls. If you They're need to get something off your chest, yeah, the, you know the line. Yeah, the you know? number. Yeah. <laughs> I mod for these group of fucking idiots. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> uh, and of course, I'm thank you to the Back Pocket patrons who, uh, without your support, truly the show would not exist. It just would not exist. It doesn't matter how many sponsored segments we do. It's it true. would literally just not exist at all. So thank you so much. If you have a dollar to throw away, we appreciate it so much. If you don't have a dollar, throw those eyeballs this way. Keep them in your head. Keep your head attached to your neck. Just don't throw them at us. Just sit in front of a computer and watch the show instead. Uh, and, of course, thank you to the Top Stitchers. The Top Stitchers who support us each and every month. They know who they are. They know who they are. I'll go through them, though. You've you've got knee. I knee. We all are a niche. Uh, oh, you say Nathan. I say, God damn it, Will. Not again. It's Mason, not Nathan. Slow punk. You might punk slow, but you donate fast and often. Happy birthday, mate. It's Loki Cat. He's still playing Metal Gear Solid 5. 
He's leaking from all of his milk nipples. Oh, it's Akrash. I don't know what other kind of nipple there is, but we'll find out. Hey, I just installed this brand new shooter and goddammit, Avex is already level 30 at it. No Nuts. Uh, he's your... No camo. Uh, skip camo. Oh, camo's there. He was hiding in plain sight. All oh, right, shit. Uh, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, he's your new favorite Twitter follow. It's Nicrotex. We don't use a shitty home brand box. Use a boxy. Box your corpses in a boxy. We built this city. Then we sung this city. Then we unfortunately sunk that city, but he's still happy. It's Coastal City. Uh, Max Chase Games, Kung Poobie. It isn't just a game, it's a state of mind, but mainly it's a game. It's Kung Poobie, available now on the iOS App Store. What happens in Vegabus stays in Vegabus. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a bit sexy. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> it's all falling apart. We can't come back though, can we? What do you mean? <laughs> fine. I'm sorry. We're oh. fine. Um, up. <laughs> destroyer of worlds, then builder of worlds, then seller of worlds. It's a good gig, and it's A. Timothy. Who's that good boy? Who's that good boy? It's Jep. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Evil Spy Boy. Head to tasteofmultifish.com for more information. And to our American correspondent, it's Freyham, spreading the good word pocket across the USA. Oh, so I will tell you, I decided I needed to write some new ones of this last week because we saved them all. It's hard to write new ones for these where it's often like, you know, I know some of you more than others, but it's based around a name or something. And so it's like, yeah. a, and we've already built commercials and logos. And stuff <laughs> the most <laughs> obvious thing we've jumped on for the commercial, you're yeah. right. So then it's like, what's the third tier version and of I funny did, joke around And I did this at like one o'clock on Tuesday morning or something. <laughs> just before I went to bed, I was just hammering these out as I was finishing off an episode <laughs> of Succession. Uh, the What Happens in Vegas did not tweak for me at all. I was just like, what happens in Vegas? Yeah, that, no, that, that, that analogy <laughs> worked. Checks Good. Out. Checks out. Good. <laughs> Um, so anyway, there you go. Well done. That's the end of the show. <laughs> I don't know. I, I can't come back from that. Um, stick around for the post show. If you do subscribe to the Patreon uh, and none of that, Steph, yeah, take us out. <laughs>